All right, here's a simple step that you can do if you want to lose more body fat, build more muscle, or just improve your health. One step, ready for this? Eat more protein. Eating more protein has been strongly connected to losing more body fat, getting better health, and building more muscle. It's a simple step you can take that'll help you pretty much regardless of where your goal is. And this is true for most people. Uh, this one is interesting because early on when we started the podcast, I was the guy that kept saying that protein isn't the magic metro macronutrient. Right. It turns out it might be. The studies <laughs> keep coming out. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how we, you know, we had conversations about it in the beginning. And I think it's because we came directly from the gym space yes. where, where you just see like um, the unnecessary version of that. Um, but your average person, I mean, for the most part, really – under consumed protein. Oh, the, the, the studies on it with fat loss show that when people simply try to hit more protein, they end up eating less and lose more body fat. And this is a great strategy because it's not a takeaway. It's more like a just try eating more of this, right? So psychologically, it works. It also works physiologically because it suppresses your appetite. Then for muscle building, that's been well established. Everybody knows that. And then there's this new weight loss study that came out. Max Lugavere shared it um, recently where they had groups of people lose weight, uh, same calories, but one group had a higher protein version of the low calories. The other group had a lower protein version of, this, of those calories. The higher protein version had better health markers. Mm. So the argument used to be that most of the health marker improvements with weight loss were just from the fat loss. So you eat less calories, you lose body fat. So right. as long as you're hitting your macronutrient minimums or whatever, you're, you're, it doesn't really make a big it's difference. It's law of thermodynamics. Not yeah. true. They're showing that a higher protein, same calorie version of a diet is actually better, not just for fat loss, but for health markers as well. Things like insulin sensitivity, glucose, um, and other blood markers. So eating more protein across the board is, is good. Now, I will say this one little thing I'll add here. Um, don't try to do this through protein powders. Right. That's the worst way to do this. In fact, I think there's maybe some benefit to doing that. But if it comes from whole foods, that's where you're going you're gonna to reap all these benefits. That was the go-to in the gym. And I yeah. think that's what led us to kind of question it a bit, you know, in the beginning. But, yeah, from whole food sources, obviously, that's where we want to steer everybody. Yeah, no, I, I challenged this from the very beginning when we talked about it. I remember this is one of the first things that we we actually disagreed with on this podcast. If you go all the way back to the early episodes, yeah. we go back and forth. Now, that, not that I don't necessarily agree with Sal's argument. Like, I think the point he was making back then was true, too, was that – you know, there is this massive push just to sell supplements and protein powders yeah. and that the uh, fitness community, like they overdo it. They're taking four <laughs> scoops of protein at a time and like everywhere they go, they got bars and shakes. And so I totally understood the angle he was coming from. But I just remember that general message not being a great one for the majority because most people that I coached and trained, they they suffered from this. They didn't get enough protein. And it does, it, it not only benefits, it benefits both building muscle and fat loss significantly. It's like one so, of the few things that does a ball of it. Right. Yeah. So if you're somebody who uh, overconsumes, you know, bad calories, I shouldn't say bad, overconsumes any calories, right? You're overeating and you're and you're putting on uh, on body fat. Uh, <clears throat> focusing on a higher protein diet helps satiate you and keep you from eating more calories. Obviously a huge benefit and will help with fat loss. Then in addition to that, uh, it's essential to building muscle. So you cannot build muscle without any protein. You got to have protein in your diet. And we know that there's benefits as you start to go up towards the one-to-one -one ratio. And so the the more of it you tend to consume, the greater the benefits are towards building muscle. So you have a single macro that is benefited the people that are trying to lose body fat and benefit the people that are trying to build muscle. And I just... It's. A, I think it's a message that needs to continue to be pushed because still to this day, if I tell somebody, just eat the way you eat, let me see your diet, and I look at it, one of the first things I see as a glaring, obvious direction is to add protein. Even if they're getting the essential amount, there's still room for me to tell them to eat more. And when I tell them to eat more, they tend to eat less of the other yeah, shit. Yeah, essential protein for most people would be like 40, you know, anywhere between like 30 to 60 grams of protein a day on average. But what we're talking about is uh, studies will show about 0.6 to 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. That's kind of complicated. Just simplify it. Eat your weight in protein, in grams of protein, or eat your target weight in right. grams of protein. I say target weight for people who want to lose a lot of body weight, uh, mm. body fat. So and or somebody who wants to build a lot, right? So yeah. if you're somebody who wants to get to 220 pounds and, and you only and weigh- 210. Yeah. Eat two, aim for 220 grams of protein. Right, right. If you want to lose 30 pounds, aim for that target body weight. But it's going to be high protein uh, regardless. And that has profound 
fat loss, muscle building, and health uh, promoting benefits. And this message it needs to be communicated more often now because of the interesting demonization of animal sources of food. It's been somewhat politicized. And look, you can do this through plant sources. It's really hard though. It's, it's, you're probably going to want to get a lot of this protein from, from animal sources. It's really hard to eat 30 or 40 or 50 grams of protein from plant sources without also having a tremendous volume of other things and just total amount of food yeah. and maybe digestive issues. Animal sources tend to be best, but um, it's, look, the data is very clear on this and it's a lot of data. It's not a little bit of data. It's a lot of data that supports this. So it's, it's one easy step that you could take whether you want to lose weight, gain weight, or just improve your health. Just hit those, those protein targets. Uh -huh. you know, it's a big one. All right, today's giveaway, MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a huge sale this month on some correctional exercise programs. MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle, all 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So we got home yesterday from Utah, which uh, good Exhausted, time with you guys. Bro. Yeah, good time. We oh. packed it all in, man. That little short trip that we took, and we did a lot. We right. did a lot. Yeah, a lot. Um, by the way, the we have a, a place up for people who don't know. We have a place up in uh, Park City, Utah, and uh, we we designed it to be like this great place where you could go if you like skiing or hiking or mountain biking or outdoor stuff. But then in the house, we put a gym and red light therapy and sauna and steam room and cold dip and all the stuff that, you know, fitness minded people. So that's what we're up there doing. We're putting more stuff that like that in there. And pl plus also doing some creative stuff behind the scenes that we can't talk too much about. We don't want to ruin the surprise. Uh, by the way, we all built the sauna ourselves. So everybody know, <laughs> we, hey, I don't want anybody inspecting it. <laughs> it might hey, fall apart. Hey, the funniest, you, you were overconfident. Adam. Uh, well, uh, okay. So Adam's like 30 minutes. We'll finish. This. So it came with, <laughs> Two so days. there's, there's a YouTube video <laughs> on God, it. Dude. Right. Okay. Well, first of all, we had somebody hired to do it. We already know better. Right. So yeah. like, okay, first of all, we already know better typically. And so we had someone hired to do it. Now the idea was cause we had Eli with us. We have our, you know, videographer, photo guy i want to get some photos of the house with the lap this is pretty much the last piece we have some little things here and there but this is pretty much the big glass piece that's mm -hmm. coming into the house and so we wanted it finished before we left and so the guy who was scheduled to come do it ended up postponing till that following saturday and we we're all like pissed like dude we've got to get this done and it's like okay we do have a house full of you know five dudes we should be able to put this you know <laughs> yeah. lincoln log type of jacuzzi or i mean sauna together and so jerry sends over <laughs> a youtube video of them assembling this thing and when i watch it i'm like oh my god not a tool is required mm -hmm. and it's and going it, together like butter and in 12 minutes and 43 seconds they put the whole thing together yeah. from the box Which, to that uh, right away, there was a bunch of cuts, so I already knew that was bullshit. Uh, yeah, that was time length and signature length, and that was at least an hour that they condensed down to like 12 minutes. Well, but. my favorite part is you're the most, Justin is by far the most handy uh, between uh, the three of us. Adam and I are yeah, no, pretty bad. I just still try. We're That's pretty all. bad. Yeah. But Ju Justin's the most handy. But nonetheless, we're, we're putting this together, and what makes me laugh is, and this is something that I I have to learn over and over again. Anytime I put together one of my kids' toys or I have to build a bed or a piece of furniture, I always have to relearn this every time. If the piece doesn't fit, mm. something's wrong. Yes. I don't have to force it. Yeah. But in, what do we end up doing? Pieces aren't fitting. Justin's down there, oh, shoving. I'm pulling down. <laughs> well, I missed the whole He's like, beginning of it. Right? I had to come in halfway. Oh, dude. Mm, like, we, were, we were squeezing shit together. Like, why together. is this fitting? This is strange. At the, like, after like a certain point, we had built some of it, and then we looked at it, and then I looked down, and I said, Oh shit! I think we did something backwards on the base. We had to take it all apart again and redo it. <laughs> oh. Well, our our Such biggest strengths are weakness. Like uh, we do things and we do it efficiently, but we go like yeah. we don't <laughs> slow down and like yeah. you know take our time, pay attention to all those little details. That's just not our mo. And so uh, it, it again it played out how it was going to play out because I've learned this from construction. It's like if you don't get that that base that foundation like completely square and perfect everything else is going to be fucked by let's say a 16th the now up higher you get like an eight yeah. now higher it's a, an inch and it just keeps getting away from you yeah. so pretty much is that was the case what a, what a great point justin like the things that have served us 
uh, successful entrepreneurs, ready, aim, shoot, hurry, just go, you yeah. know, get yourself back up. Figure do out again. what we need to do. Yeah, right figure out you know, say those things have served us really well in business. Well, <laughs> because be, in business, there's no instructions. Well, and in business, yeah, you're expected exactly. to fail multiple times yeah. before success. So Here they the, gave us instructions. Yeah, so, like, yeah. so the theory is, <laughs> the way the theory is we operate in this place of like, just go, we're going to fail, we'll figure it out, we'll fail, we'll figure yeah. it out, we'll fail, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But with something like that, it's like, no, if you actually it's take your time. It's not supposed to be iterative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not supposed to be iterative. No. Just it's like, we Building is not iterative. You have a plan. You kept talking about drilling a new hole or, or shaving a piece off with the saw. Like, I don't know if we should do that. For I know. Well, you know, I'm a problem solver. Like, it's, but it's not going to be good. But and it, then, it and then we're all, hey, then we're all done. Finished. Finally. Oh my god, so so elated, right? And then we look over. There's like a bag of like little things that like wedges and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have been helpful yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the roof. Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, it's all put together and yeah. it's great. It's, it's solid and it's beautiful. It's solid. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah it's so nice. if you visit our it's place, made with love. It's if you go to visit our yeah. place, what's the site for the place? By the way, is it mindpumpparkcity.com? Mind if you go visit the place and you stay there, just know that we put our own blood, sweat, and tears into putting some of that stuff together. So yeah, I, well, I mean, I really hope Still that you know. Like so we, we've actually <laughs> we've, yeah. we've talked a little bit about the show. We haven't like really pushed it hard on the show because we wanted to wait till this kind of this last piece. Like it, the place is ready to rock as far as, uh, you know, having all the cool amenities that we, we had planned to be there. And what I hope happens uh, from this process is, you know, like any any business is that we that we will reiterate some of the things as far as making it better. Like, yeah. I really want to disrupt this space uh, and do something different than what most people are. So I hope our listeners, we have actually a lot of listeners that are already booked for the rest of the year that go and give us feedback. I, I hope that it becomes a place that people that like this show that will go there and they come back year after year. And every time they do, we've enhanced it. We've made it better. Or we've yeah. added things to it or made the experience better for that person. And so I'm super excited. I've been waiting for this day when we have everything all in there and actually can kind of promote it and talk about it. So can't wait to hear all That's the feedback. Cool. Dude, I came home and this has got to be the best thing. I know you guys also have the same thing, especially when you have little kids. For a father who who works and ha and comes home or goes on a business trip, the most amazing feeling ever. This is like the best thing in the world. I swear to God, it's probably top three. Is when I come home and I'm driving yeah. home. Yeah, and I, yes, yeah. and I'm on the phone with my wife. I'm hand. I'm on my way home right now. Oh, okay. You know, the, the Aurelius wants to wait by the door. I roll up and he literally runs out to the yeah. car and I pick him up and she's got the baby and the baby's smiling. It's like the greatest feeling in the world. This is the best. Oh, it's so amazing. It's always the best. Yeah. yeah. Until you have teenagers and you come well, home. Well, I was just going to say, I was like, I got, uh, which was crazy. I like, still got the, a little bit, you know, how to eat it. Like, he, you know, he definitely was like, dad, but it was like, I know that's going to go away because he does have that too cool kind of thing. But, you know, every rah, runs, jumps on me. And hugged, and I was oh, like, oh, it's I the greatest, it. yeah, dude. The I saw the video you posted. Yeah, I actually yeah. posted. I mean, I had day in the life, right? What, what a terrible day to have day in the life. They were flying, traveling. I'm exhausted. Like, I, I don't know if you guys saw. I had to get on the thing. I was like, sorry. It's like I fell asleep <laughs> for three hours in the middle of the day. <laughs> like, it's just like, you know, we did this. We did three this. Three hours like, later. Did yeah. you do the uh, <laughs> SpongeBob? I should have done, yeah. done the SpongeBob thing. But, yeah. No, so but when I did go pick Max up, uh, Katrina did film it, right? So we went to his school and uh, to pick him up, and he obviously had he ran me. to you, so cute. Oh yeah, yeah dude. Great. And he, then on top of that, like he's he's different that day. Like, and we we were prepared for. It. So part of like me taking a nap, like I actually told Katrina, I was like, I need to lay down because I know Max is just going to want to be with me the rest oh, of the yeah, night, yeah. and I won't, and I'll be exhausted, and I don't want to be the dad who's just like grumpy because I haven't slept. And so I'm like, go home, let me power nap so I have a little bit of energy. That way when I see him and he, I'm all excited and we can play and we can do stuff because he is. He's like, he's like full on want to be and do everything with me. And we took him after picking him from school so he was all excited. And then we take him over to the grocery store. Oh my God, the cutest thing ever. I wish... I would have caught more footage of this. I recorded a little bit of it, but then the rest of the time I was just experiencing it, which was great. Uh, he wanted to he wanted to help so much that I got him one of those little the baskets, you know, mm -hmm. and the damn baskets ever almost as big as he is, you know, and so he's like carrying it, somewhat dragging it on the grocery floor. Yeah, I'll follow you. You lead the way. Yeah, you got the. Yeah. You want me to carry that or you got it? Okay.
and he did he just did not want to let it go and so we he started getting stuff and then Katrina went off and did her own thing and then Max and I would go get some things and he wanted me to put it in there so cute. and so it's getting heavier and heavier <laughs> and he's like dragging, he's dragging it like yeah you barely do it I'm like hey buddy I said let, let me help you no no I got it. I have muscles and he's like flexing yeah. and saying he could do it I must have got stopped by at least I don't know eight or nine people uh, that were like, oh my god, he's so cute! Like he's and he was just talking all loud. Like it was he, he, he was talking as if it was just him and I in the grocery store, and not paying any attention <laughs> to anybody else. Cutting and I felt so bad. I was telling, oh, I'm so sorry because he's like dragging his thing, cutting people off, like walking over right where someone is looking for stuff. And <laughs> but everybody, you know, was really nice because I think, uh, and which was great. Like I wasn't, I wasn't dealing with any like twenty year olds or teenagers. Everybody were like probably parents themselves, and so everybody was like super cool with it yeah, and we're right. like you know what get your kid out of the way with that all of them were just like oh my god he's so cute or interacting with him and talking to him was it was a good time oh dude, man so. such a good time you know what great. else is really fun to to watch is and at what some point i mean not everyone's gonna be able to experience this but if you have the opportunity to go to an airport with adam it is <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time. It is always fun. Adam is. I thought I was not good this time. What an did I airport do? person. What did I do yeah, this I time? Yeah. You're just irritated. But yeah. then we go to the, the airport in Salt Lake City, and this airport is giant. I hate that airport. It's the worst airport in the country. You'll get in. You'll you'll go in. Uh, it land in one place, and you need to get under the gate, and it's a 30 minute walk. It's a or hike, 20, man. Yeah. Like that's I'm talking about with with those moving sidewalks and everything. Yeah, it is far. So you're like, oh, I got plenty of time. At no, least you get don't. Some weird murals for us to look at. Yeah, you know, like, like, that's a, yeah <laughs> like something like crazy apocalyptic. Like I'm interested. But in we're, that. We're, we go through security, and Justin and I uh, was it was yeah, you and I were kind of there first or whatever. And we're waiting, and we're like, where's Adam? Like I swear he's watching. He's gonna walk up. He's gonna be so mad. Sure enough, we see you walking far away. <laughs> you're so pissed <laughs> off because it was a distance. He's, got, uh, he's definitely has a, a type of angry a walk. Yeah, yeah. Walk. I mean, I get now. Fuck this airport. <laughs> I've, I've flown out of that place so many times now that I just I get irritated being there yeah. i mean when we got when we landed remember when we landed so we're i mean you know when you're coming in on the plane you know when it gets you know down to a certain level you can already pick up the cell phone tower yeah. so you're like already texting and stuff right so i you guys are all like where are you guys at and i'm like i was still coming down from, from you know and i was like oh I'm, I'm landing now and then like i don't know about five minutes later doug's like oh i'm not far behind i'm coming down now too so i landed i don't know maybe 10 minutes before doug or so give or take and then still took another. But your uh, gate was like on the other oh, side. Oh, bro! And then and they the plane. You think a bus from the middle <laughs> yeah. of nowhere to get to the actual airport to then walk for another thirty minutes? It's a yeah. it's the worst airport. You know it's bad when it's the, bro. LAX is the worst airport. I don't. I oh, disagree. I I did, oh. LAX in general really? because it's like so packed and busy. Is as it's like San Francisco is like that too. I hate it's that. always under construction. But the way yes. the airport is designed is the worst there. It's just a stupid design. It's literally, instead of um, like a spoke, like I think most uh, airports are, where it's the hub and then you have all the A, B, right, C, and right. it's like a spoke. Theirs is like- Did you look a, it up? Is it just long or something? I don't need to look it up. I walked it a million times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I know what the fuck it looks like. <laughs> it's Mapped awful. it out like one of those well, cars. Hey, that when I, I got my GPS, when I got my boarding yeah. pass uh, on the way home, I don't know if I told you guys this or not, but I, 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 she's like, where are you going to? And I go, uh, San Jose, California, like that. And she prints it off and she goes, oh, you're, you're B1. It's going to feel like you're walking to California, by the way. Oh. <laughs> that's what she said to me <laughs> when I walked away. I'm like, that's when you know it's bad when they when they say shit like that to you. It's like, oh, you're going to feel like you walk to California. Oh, bro. It's, it is. It is. It's a hike. But you get your steps and everything. But it's good. You need to know this because if you think you got time to get your gate, you yeah, don't. You got a plan for it. Yeah. So, that Doug, let me see that. Is that, the, is that what it looks like right there? Yeah. So, you have Concourse A, which is just one long, long strip. And right. then you have an underground thing that takes you to Concourse B, which is another long strip. Okay. So It doesn't look super, it doesn't look like it's shaped. Yeah, because it's, it's it's shrunk down a <laughs> one thousandth time. So what you don't it's know like is the difference between Concourse A and just to yeah. B that's is so, like four miles. <laughs> it's yeah, like, like the the satellite. Ever. One's uh, in Utah, view. one's in those states. <laughs> yeah, it's awful, man. Wow. Yeah, yeah. wow. But I thought I was pretty calm this time. I was like, what's he talking about? I felt like I was- You were. You were yeah, more yeah, calm yeah, than yeah, normal. Yeah, no. You're fine. Everybody left at a at a reasonable time yeah. you know what i'm saying like everybody got got to I the mean, airport. i almost killed doug and oh you know, yeah Eli, did. but <laughs> i didn't have all my caffeine yet and i <laughs> just didn't, didn't realize just, they were in the car Justin never drive right it's always me who drives yeah. and well, i was see, like that was the heck though that's why he was in a good mood <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh hey oh, I knew maybe that. you're Smart right guy. justin's good dude oh maybe you're right maybe maybe i need to I drive trying, less. i was trying maybe. to bring adam's stress levels down a little bit increased at the beginning 
I don't, well, they were behind the, the car, and the there was a, it was like a suburban. The trunk was open. By the way, if you try to reverse with the trunk open, the camera you can't see, and yeah. the car beeps. But nonetheless, Justin <laughs> starts backing up. Huh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, that's they were weird. The car. Zzz, yeah. Dunk. Yeah. Almost killed him. <laughs> no, everybody survived, and we're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Nobody died. I, well, you got, I mean, I was. I'm still yeah. tired. Like, Super it, tired. I, I didn't realize we put a lot of energy into. I mean, you know, when, whenever we're doing something creative and we haven't done this in a while together, but when we do, it's a lot of energy. It mm-hmm. really requires a lot of energy and thinking and just, you know, putting it out there. And we did a lot of work. We sell, a bunch, so of, we sell you a bunch of bitches, dude. Like, know. Like, there's dudes out there digging ditches in like 120 uh, degree. Oh, like, no. like it's such hard work. <coughs> we have to sit in I'm our air conditioning. To- <laughs> That's true. That's true. Different work. But it is, no, yeah. it, I, you know, honestly though, to defend, to defend it, uh, it's different, right? Because I've done, I did manual labor growing up, and I've had yeah. some grueling, crazy days of like laborious work, right? Especially working the dairy and doing crazy shit out there. And uh, this is different. It's the the the, and I never experienced this when I was younger, where I did something that takes so much mental capacity, right? And so much out of your th- thinking. Like I don't, I literally after I leave from a trip like that with us, I just I don't want to talk or think. Much. You know what's weird about I, it? Yeah. I just wanna, a couple my days. brain is mush for the most part. You know what's weird about it is that your body isn't tired, right? In fact, your body needs to move because we haven't been doing less. And, and that, but that, your mind is fatigued, which by the way the makes for shitty is. sleep. It's a yeah. shitty feeling. It's, it's a sh- you yeah. can't sleep very well because yeah. the body's not exhausted enough yep. that it needs to like settle down. But your brain is exhausted. Yep. So then you even have this problem with kind of falling asleep, I found. Like, that's yeah. part of why. I feel like that yeah. sometimes being in here too long with the lights mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, just sitting here, you know, doing podcast after podcast. I'll leave and I can tell my body needs to move, but I'm mentally fatigued and it doesn't feel good. You know, it's like, get me outside. So I wish if we ever open another one of these studios or whatever, build one. Yeah. I want sun a sunroof. Big, yeah. 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 Big skylights um, in here. Um, we'll we'll work on Bring camera. It in. Doug, so, yeah. So. Did you guys, um, I know I brought it up on the drive home and, and we talked a little bit about it, but I wanted to talk more about it. And I wanted to know if anybody actually researched it more or looked more into it. But uh, I saw a post the other day about the AI that China is doing in with children in schools oh. right now. And there are these these AI headbands. Oh, it's crazy! That the kids the kids Scary, wear headbands dude. all day. They have chips in their in their clothes, so they're they're monitoring heart rate, temperature, uh, movement, brain waves, uh, brain waves, yep. uh, focus, uh, and, the, and like the, eye and tracking and all. That. The yes. headband yeah. will light up and let the instructor know if the, if the student is engaged or not engaged, and they'll they'll connect it to other biomarkers, and they're literally creating using AI to find ways of Make, manipulating or, or controlling these kids to produce the outcomes that they want. Yeah, really crazy, really and crazy. And rating them based on how well they're Oof. you know paying attention and staying focused, and it's it's scary because it, it it's going to set a new precedent. Uh, if let's say that's successful, right, and people think that this is a good thing, that parents are going to be like, yeah, well, I have to to keep up. So that's what I was saying on the car ride, right? To you guys, when Sal's like, oh, that is crazy. That's going to backfire. It's going to be all this bad shit afterwards. I'm like, well. I don't know. First of all, it was voluntary. Tons of parents already volunteered yeah. their kids to do this. It was all voluntary in the first place. Yeah. If the outcome is to, to your point, which I think will, is I think kids will learn faster and be smarter and all these things that they're looking for will happen. Uh, what makes you think that it's not going to be adopted by even more people well, and not be pushed? Well, if the AI is... Ultimate tiger mom software. So here's yeah. the deal. If the AI is really uh Are you looking at it, Doug? Is no, I'm checking something else here. You're on Pornhub again. <laughs> Way to go. Just let us work over here, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, if the AI is really good and intelligent, what I think it's going to start to figure out, because initially you think, oh, they're going to try and control these kids. They're just going to try and force them to do more. But if the AI is smart enough, it's going to see that that's not working. And it's going to start to realize that creative time alone, play, music, contributes to better learning and better innovation and creativity. Mm -hmm. We haven't been able to quantify this, uh, but I think AI may be able to. Like, we've made a huge mistake where if you look at schools now, we thought we knew what was important and we took out stuff that we thought wasn't important. So kids are not active, kids aren't playing music, they're not learning other languages. We're making them sit down and focus and try and learn in a particular way. And what's happened is reduce of innovation, you're getting kids who are feeling disenfranchised. And entrepreneurs and innovators tend to be different. Um, creative thinkers tend to be different. And so we may be crushing a lot of people with that approach. I'm wondering if AI will pick up on that. If yeah. it's intelligent enough to see, 
oh, the, you know what? Yeah. These children's brains actually work better when we do this, that, I and wonder, the other. It kind of reminds me of when we like revisited the work week, you know, for to see productivity and yeah. like how they experimented with like reducing that substantially and then found like better output, but then also too like it it took a, a little bit away from the amount of volume of things it could accomplish mm -hmm. and so it's like kind of that that dance of like how much can you do effectively at once versus stay focused on like very few things and i'm wondering if you know even with that technology like monitoring these kids like how much can we bombard them with before they like fry out and that's that's my concern is these kids are like sort of the beta testers of this whole thing. And, and, you know, they may crank it up to a level where it's, it, so, they're going to be psychologically damaged. So here's the, the bad side of it that I could see on the good side. The bad side of it for me, I don't think necessarily they're going to hammer these kids to fry them because the AI, the AI would show yeah, they're, it's not they're productive. Productivity is coming down. Yeah. yeah. So that's not the part necessarily. <clears throat> the part that I'm more worried about is the data that they're going to get on humans and the way that they're going to figure out how to control people yeah. and, and, and how that may be used I in the future. So that's the, only, that's the only negative thing actually I really see is the now the power to condition yeah. the young minds. Because they'll know exactly how much that's right. time, they'll, exactly they'll, how much- they'll, you know, know who's, they'll, they'll know which one's rebelling or being distracted or does one and yeah. which ones are following suit yeah, like right. yeah no that's that, i mean there's obviously so, that 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 part of it that i think has got but i mean i think is going to get it end up getting ad so, adopted and i think it's going to get praised yeah so think of that's a future like this happen. right uh in the past um yeah. totalitarian regimes and control was very forceful but imagine using ai and ai figures out how to get the outcome without you feeling like you're oppressed or being forced by simply manipulating you right. with the right imagery, music, stimulation, whatever neurochemicals. Yeah. So the whole time you're like, I'm not being, this is what I want to do or actually feel this way. This is cool. So that's where I think uh, it could be really interesting. And then people in control of that will have lots of crazy power. Yeah. And for people who think that it won't go in that direction, if I thought it, they did. Yeah. And I, I don't have bad intentions. So we'll, well see. Well, I mean, marketing companies and I mean, there's, there's been a lot of that. What, what do they call that? Like um, when, when you have like images, imagery and like commercials and oh. things that are like, you know, subconscious. Oh, things. subliminal. Subliminal messaging, right? Yeah. Like and things like that. Where we've been experimenting with the human psychology for so long now. And now to have like AI and all that on top of what we've already learned from just human psychology behavior is, is going to be crazy. Yeah. What do you guys think about the new Apple courts? Have you guys seen no. that? Doug, exit out of your backdoor bandits and look up Apple, <laughs> Apple Courts for us, please. Okay. <laughs> if you hate insist. To pull, hope to hate to pull you away from what you got going on over there, but could you pull that up for Yeah. Uh, he was robbing that guy. You know what's funny about that? I 100% would bet money it's a real title. I guarantee <laughs> that exists somewhere. I guarantee. <laughs> I actually think that's where I got it from. I think I heard it a long time ago or seen it a long time ago. I'm sure it's a, a real thing. Uh, <laughs> it's called Apple Quartz. It's I think the Quartz is the the code name for it. It's AI coaching that Apple is working on and going to roll out soon, which is going to use all the data that they've been collecting with all the health heart coaching. Rate. Yes. Oh. Ooh. Yes. All right. Well, here's 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 what I think about it. Until it figures out the psychological piece, it's not going to do shit. Of course, it, it's just going to give a lot of information. <laughs> So I think it'll be com it'll probably be utilized by human coaches who understand how to build connection and that kind of stuff. At some point, though, AI will, will learn that too. I mean, isn't it kind of isn't this yeah. the, the 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 normal evolution of all things really? Like this, like the new technology, new new better ways come in, and then the cream rises to the top still. So it eliminates the majority, yeah. or it replaces the majority, which forces the competition to elevate their level or get out competed by this new thing. And then that cream rises and then a new technology again. And then it just keeps. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of how I feel. I, yeah. But I mean, I think that this is going to really uh, make our space very competitive for somebody that isn't at, at the yeah. top as far as their knowledge, their abilities. Like if you're kind of just the, I put out a cookie cutter diet, a cookie cutter workout program. I give people basically cookie cutter Google type oh, that? advice. You're yeah, oh, yeah. You're, this is going to- you, If you're not the kind of trainer or coach that we talk about where you connect with people, you know how to guide them, not just tell them what to do. If you're not that trainer and you're the one that gives them workouts and meal plans and tells them what to do, just, and just does that, you're done. These, these will crush you and they're going to be free or almost free. Now, if you're the kind of coach that connects with people, knows how to guide people, help them develop relationships with exercise and nutrition that will will be with them for the rest of their life. You're safe until AI is indistinguishable from humans, but that gives you some time. 
So that those coaches are going to be fine, and they'll be able to use this stuff to maximize what they do. Like if you're a good trainer or coach, you'll be able to use something like this to really kick ass. With I mean, your it's, it, when you see, okay, we just had a, a, a great little thing that we just had. Side note with uh, Chat GPT stuff and the things that we're working on with this business behind the scenes. You already see the power of it to be able to, to give you a great answer to yeah. stuff like that. Imagine that integrated with this. You got to think that Apple is working on that already. I mean. Will this coach not be that? I mean, this coach could be pretty good. Yeah. If yeah. It, if it's using like, I mean, let, let's be. Uh, It'll tell you what to do, but you have to want to do it. That's the part that the. Of, like, I that's mean, the part that's the challenge. I mean, of course, but that's yeah. that's the same challenge always. Always, I know. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. it's like, but I mean, it, it could easily dominate the market. It could easily be eighty percent of the support for most people. I mean, that be that uh, that they would receive, and it's better than what they were currently getting elsewhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. I could see this being used by um, uh, health health companies, uh, medical companies. If this if they do a good job, this should be able to tailor medications and treatments and other, you know, ways of, of augmenting your treatment. It should be, because it'll be so individualized. Mm -hmm. And right now that's like a big missing piece uh, with the medical system is that individualization. So this this may be like quite transformative. What do you think, Doug? Sense. I'm thinking of other things right now. Oh, you're, still, <laughs> you're, still, you're still thinking of your thing. I was going to keep calling it. Well, I mean, he, was, he had that look like he actually had something on his mind. Oh, no, I, no, he no. obviously did, not what we were talking about. You know what he's thinking? He's like, Adam's an and asshole. Adam made me close out <laughs> hey, that fucking. He's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, hey, okay, speaking of A, hey, speaking of AI, <laughs> this is fucked up. This is terrible. Oh, I saw yeah. this on Instagram. Yeah, let's talk about this. And it, it, until people catch on, this is going to get a lot of people. So they have AI, um, you know, bots or whatever online that can mimic any voice that's online. So you can show it a sample; it'll mimic it perfectly. So here's what these here's what some seriously disgusting people have done: they've taken voices off off of people online, and then called their family members with that voice and fooled them into thinking that person was dying or in in you know major danger. Like they would show this mom; she was crying because she thought right. her daughter was kidnapped and the daughter's like, mom, I need help. Please. And you hear your own kid's voice on the phone saying, mom, I need help. Please you know, yeah. give me some money, get whatever. And uh, terrible. It's terrible. And this is like- So scary. Yeah. yeah. And you said you know somebody. That's so I, it was so funny because you sent this over to us. I hadn't heard this yet. You sent it to all of us like, beware, just so you know. And so, and I told you guys like, okay, I have this idea. Like I'll come up with a family password. Yeah. Right. So now that our fam anybody in our family will only know this password. So if you ever get some like crazy alarming yeah. phone call from me, just go, oh my God, that's crazy. What's the password? And if I can't give it to you, popcorn. then it's, yeah, yeah, it's not me. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's popcorn yeah. real hard. Thanks. Probably. So they, I, now they know I'm about, telling Katrina yeah. this and Katrina's like, oh my God, she goes, while you were gone, my mom, you know, called me and said, you need to watch out for this. I know somebody. And she tells her the story of uh, some girl who was taking advantage or a mom that was taking advantage of saying her daughter was kidnapped. Or oh something, my God. And say, and said that, you know, now luckily the mom called the, the daughter right away. And the daughter was like, what are you talking about? I'm doing the, like, she was like busy or what that. But the fact that it would fool the mother of, you know, the, the child. I can't imagine. Can you like imagine she, being on the phone and hearing your kid's voice say that? Yeah. Even if it's for five seconds. Well, and by the way, yeah, th those are extreme things that really wake people up. The, once you get some scammers that are a little smarter and more sophisticated, it won't be that crazy. Oh, yeah. They'll, hey, they'll, they'll be set a, slow a trap. Drip. Yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be easy. It'll just yeah. be like, hey, mom, over this. I'm over Okay. And they hang up and then they'll call back in. Like, oh, my God. I, I, I forgot I, the I, pin number. Yeah, yeah, I the, forgot the pin number of this. Yeah. Or I, and then it'll be, it'll get you real good. Yep. So. You know, that's obviously somebody who calls and says their kids for ransom or does something yeah. crazy like, okay, that might hit That's more. a good point. For any information that could be damning through the phone, they should probably have a password. No, that's where, so I gave it Katrina already. We came up with one. I said, when we have your next family meeting, we all get together. We'll share in person with all of them that, hey, going forward, family, when we are to discussing bank account stuff, money stuff, yeah, helping each other, that. anything that we're giving personal information over the phone. We should just have a family password that you just, you know, ask them real quick. Oh, before you give me that, what was the family password? And just mm -hmm. because it's especially my family who's connected to me, because to your point, we have so much recorded content that you can use everything that we have mm -hmm. out there and piece together almost any conversation easily. easily. Maybe not so much for Katrina, but definitely 
with my voice, we could they could they could easily get somebody in my family. Yeah, dude, we've come a long way since like the scam of the Nigerian prince and you <laughs> yeah, know, like, yeah. it's, look at where we are now, dude. Yeah. Like they're mimicking our, our family. Like this is crazy. Oh, I, I didn't even think of that. Hey, honey, what's your social security number again? Oh, I it's gonna be yeah. When yeah. you told me, like I I wasn't thinking like oh my god, life threatening. I was like, bro, this is gonna be like I got stuck on the life threatening stuff because I I was imagining my kid. No, of course, I know, yeah. I know where your brain goes right away. Where mine goes like, oh, you know what they're gonna? No, they're gonna do yeah. simple stuff just like, you think you know, like a criminal I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i know what like, I would oh do. you would, yeah you would well pull. how you would yeah and the way you set a trap like that is not by asking for the clothes right away no. you, just, you, you do a simple, simple call is hey mom heading down to the bank i'm gonna swing by there, then i'm gonna go do this and then you then you do like the more sophisticated question that the mom has already just talked you to set you up your dominoes so you yeah. can get into the yeah. real world. Wow. I mean, that's, yeah. so I mean, for anyone listening, I think that you do that with be, your family. Yeah. Do that with your family, have a password. Anytime you talk By about, by the way, they probably yeah. don't even need to go. If they really want to target you, they can have you answer the phone, get your voice sample. And then, you know what I mean? So you might not even need to be online. That's, yeah, who knows? that's already happening. That's already happening. Yeah. So I'm looking, reading interesting Dude. stuff about this and all kinds of CEOs, hundreds of thousands of dollars have been scammed and stuff. But oh. a big strategy is they'll call you with an unknown number or a scam number. They'll wait for you to speak and then they'll record your voice. And they only need like a few seconds. Wow. And then wow. they have it. And then they'll now know who you are, your number, and then they'll target someone in your family. I'm going to start making fake There's voices. so many problems. <laughs> like, answer the phone. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> What's up, honey? No. <laughs> <laughs> just start talking weird on the phone. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, that's the move. The move, the move is a password. And I just, it, how weird is that? That that's going to be a thing in the future. Where it, 100% is going to be a thing. It will be a thing. Because yeah. these guys are right now making money doing this, but they're not, in, 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 a, couple, in a few months, everyone's going to figure this out. You yeah, know, or a year or whatever, and and, and sooner or later that's the way to stop it is to you know you just but I mean you got to discipline yourself. It'll be interesting. Yeah, the but first what time if a guy like pretends to be you and is just like gets a job somewhere like over the phone and like creates an entire identity as you operating as you, and then you know you don't see it till you're doing your taxes or whatever later. I don't know. Dude, there's just so many ways like wow. somebody could use your voice and in likeness in so many directions. Well, and how inconvenient that's going to be. Like I, obviously we're sharing the stuff about. Our family because it's the people closest that we care about but jesus i have phone calls with so many business people that where i'm exchanging personal information or talking about bank accounts yes. or, so it's like now like the future is i'm gonna have to do that with everybody who i connect that way with with any yeah. sensitive information yeah imagine yeah. i mean in we were, person off air we were just talking about real estate deal going on right now imagine if I call Debbie and I have to be like, hey, Debbie, what's the password before I give you our information about mm -hmm. the business and stuff like that? And, and you're going to have to. Then she relays it to me. Then I can proceed and give it to her. Otherwise, what if I'm giving it to some random person? Like, that's it's a good thing they don't have enough clips of our voices. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm glad <laughs> we're not enough that public. Our laughs and everything. <laughs> Dude, speaking of hacks, I watched this. This is, you know, something short, but it was hilarious. This dad, uh, there was this page on Instagram with like dads or whatever. And this dad's like, I got this great hack when you want to get your kid to stop watching TV. He goes, when they're he goes, when they're not paying attention, I switch the language to Spanish. And then when my kid goes, I can't understand it, Daddy. He's like, It's because you're too tired. <laughs> 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 it's because you're too tired. Yeah. Why are they talking like that? that oh, we got to turn it off. You're too tired. You can't oh stand TV God, anymore. <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that when I get home. I'll put on Spanish. Every time I get oh, tired. Let's see if my kid notices. No, yeah. I'm <laughs> I thought that was helpful. Oh, that is hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, I want to talk about, so uh, one of the peptides I've been using, uh, people have been asking me, well, you know, because I've been mentioning, you know, that I've been taking these peptides and testing them out. And I am now have done this particular peptide for a while. And I can say, hands down, one of the most effective compounds I've ever used, Mott's C. I've talked about this on the <coughs> podcast before. Well, I'm yeah. just starting that. Bro, it is. Oh, you started? Yes. Did you oh, try it already? And Doug too, right? Just I did. Today. Doug yeah. didn't like it. I had time. a reaction. Yeah. So I had to stop. Oh, see, yeah. I wonder if it's going to be like me. On your skin. So sometimes you get a reaction, reaction yeah. like in your skin or something. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So that, and that depends. Some peptides can do that. With that some was people. my test, test moral. And I yeah, he tried got a that and I had a rash. I couldn't. Oh, use interesting. Yeah. Like, oh. like localized reaction. Oh, yeah, interesting. It's just skin. Yeah. Oh, okay. I haven't had anything. But yet. did you That's try good. the Matsi yet? I just today. Yeah. Just this morning? Yeah, just today. Okay. So uh, it's pretty remarkable. So the, the, the muscles produce it when they exercise and it tells your mitochondria to uptake more glucose. It also lowers myostatin. So if you look at, so build muscle, burn body fat, more stamina, animal studies, when they give it to mice, have dramatically more stamina. And then they they also had mice where they fed them a very high calorie diet and the, and the mice wouldn't gain body fat. 
So wow. pretty wild. Interesting. Yeah. And so I told you guys I love it because it gives me very good, clean, amazing energy. Yeah. And I also feel like I just stay leaner, easier. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to that part. Is it, it uh, do you feel it's like um, <clears throat> like a compounding thing where like it takes a little bit of time to be in your system or do you, is it like I take it and then I, that day I should notice it? So I know, so the first day I kind of felt a little bit more energized then. So the way that the, the dosing schedule was, it was three days a week for the first, I think four weeks. And then once a week afterwards, as, as I, I believe. The first day, I kind of felt a little bit of energy, I thought, but it was kind of subtle. By Wednesday, and then again by Friday, I was like, oh my God, I got way more. To the point where I was like, am I going to have trouble sleeping? But I still slept okay. And then I just felt great the whole time. Just really, really, really good. So by the end of the first week, I could really tell. Okay. You did it this morning? Or this this morning? morning, yeah. Okay. So just, just you know, starting to feel things. Yeah. So. Really interesting. But, um, you know, for again, for people, peptides go through a doctor and a pharmacy. I, I hearing horror stories of people. There was one person who commented who was on a peptide, um, didn't see any changes in their blood markers. And he, and people are like, where did you get your peptide from? He's like, Oh, research chemical company. They're like, mm. you probably got nothing or mm -hmm. who knows what you got. So he had to throw it away. I wonder how much that, what a difference this makes like each person. Like, I mean, I, I feel like Doug and I are kind of similar when they, especially with like the cognitive stuff, like, I mean, you you were raving about C Max and I think Dihexa and like I the ran C Max for sure. Yeah, yeah, I ran both of those. It didn't really feel much, and then we just had a week where we were gone and I didn't have any of them with with me, and I didn't feel like I there's there is an, in, didn't there's feel, an interesting individual variance. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's what Jay was telling us. Jay Campbell um, was telling us too. Same thing. He says that. Some people with the Mott C can tell a big difference. Other people, not necessarily. Yeah. I notice a huge difference. Uh, the C Max, I notice a pretty big difference. I can tell when I go off. Yeah. I'm not as sharp when yeah. I go off. Yeah. So far, the uh, um, the BPC 157, is that? You right? notice a big difference. Yeah. I know, that I noticed uh, for sure when I did that one a lot. Tihexa, kind of not really. Uh, see, nothing bad from those. And it's hard, right? Because I, I typically, before I talk about any sort of supplement or peptide or anything that I'm taking, I like to. Try it, not try it for a while. Try it. like I like to have a couple, because yeah. and I really feel like the 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 coming off of it, not using it for a while, comparing and contrasting mm -hmm. to me is the best way for me to decide if something is really working for me. Is it, that. You know what? Along that uh, line, so I tried tesofensin, which I was very sensitive to. Actually, I had to stop taking it. Lots of people love it. Say it's the greatest, amazing. I feel great. Lots of energy, mm -hmm. good mood. I'm sharp. I was very sensitive to it. I actually stopped taking it because it made me feel like just not good, too amped, mm. like uncomfortably so. So I had to go off of it. So yeah. that's the thing is that you, you might have some bio-individuality. Yeah. You know, anyway, speaking about people we work with uh, or mention, um, your suits looks, okay, you have how many suits from State and <laughs> uh, Liberty? Yeah. State and Liberty? I think nine now. Did you get one from the Nine. Here? No, I, I haven't, yeah, I, I gotta wow. go yeah. get fitted. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and like, Adam's always showing up to the live events, like upstaging us now. Uh, <laughs> and then we're like, oh man, I guess we gotta wear I have, suits. You know I have the, suits from them. So that, you know, the backstory on them, it's, this is, they're, they, they've been one of the, my favorite, uh, you know, like, creating a partnership, right? Like, we always talk about on the show how, we don't just take a partnership that we meet the CEOs and we do this kind of courting process. I mean, we've been technically courting them for over a year now. Like I, I remember when I first came across their stuff. So that one of their, uh, one of their work people that work for them is a huge fan of the show and reached out one time to me and said, Hey, I'd love to. And they sent over some shirts to yeah. us. Shirts are rad. Sat here yeah. for probably, I don't know how many months. I think it was Doug who first opened it up and, and made a comment about like, Oh my God, I really like this. Then I tried it. I'm like, Oh my God, I really like this. Then I finally got something from them, fell in love with the, all their, their button up shirts, their polo shirts, like all their stuff is amazing. And then got in contact, got a chance to hit it off with the founder. The founder's an ex NHL player, athletic, fit dude. Just couldn't find. Well, so that's the thing that's different because yep. that that you could literally, if you're fit. So if you work out, you know this. If you're a guy, buying a suits is buying suits oh, is a pain in the ass, especially around the neck. It's, yeah, you oh. just it just they're not built for guys with wide shoulders, small waist, yeah. bigger arms. You always have to. It just never fits yeah. right. Exactly. You'll never get a suit off the rack. I could get a suit off the rack with them because they're designed for athletic builds and mm -hmm. it fits like it, it was tailored. It hugs it. Yes. Yeah. So that's, and same thing with their shirts and their pants. Everything. So well, I don't know if you guys know that I just got back last month from Austin when I went out there for my nephew's uh, wedding and, you know, he's, he's a bit of a last minute guy and was calling me because he knew that we were connected to him and said, Hey, I, I wanted to, 
uh, order a suit for them uh, for the wedding. I'm like, isn't your wedding like in two weeks, bro? <laughs> he's, he's, I'm like, it's a little last minute to get a suit for your wedding, bro. <laughs> so, I'm almost see what I can do. They actually were able to ship him a suit that he was able to wear off the rack. Wow. And it, lo it looked amazing. They're incredible. The team over there is awesome. And we're finally working with them. And it was a, it was a great, like, relationship for us as far as the building process to get there because uh, i love this part when i meet another company that's like this too where they're like listen uh when we first started talking it was literally just kind of hooking each other up and helping each other and it's like listen i i, I mean I, one day maybe we'll we'll do a formal business deal and we'll and we'll make money off of it but for now i love your product i like what you guys are about like i really like the founder and so for like almost a year we were just kind of plugging each other helping stuff out and like now it's like a formal business partnership that we have with them. And so, the, you know, launching this or kicking this off formally for me is really cool because it's been like a, a year in the making. Dude, you said launching. You just reminded me. So I, you want to talk about, I, I can't think of a better example of how biased and crazy and fake the media is than the way that uh, they covered the SpaceX launch. Crazy. So I did not know this. I read probably like you guys articles. It said yeah. space, SpaceX launch goes up in flames or rocket explodes. That's the titles, right? The, of yeah. these articles. Like, oh man, they kind of had a failure. That kind of sucks or whatever. The odds that they would get the rocket off the ramp or off the, the base or whatever was like 50-50. Like the goal was just to get it to launch. Yeah, That would have been a huge success. Not only did it launch, but it went up a significant distance and then it did explode like they expected, but it was a massive success. But the media covers it yeah. as this terrible, like, horrible failure so crazy to it's me. so wild and, and uh, so i listened to a podcast where they were discussing what they've been able to accomplish they've been able to take the cost of you know flying a, a, a couple tons up to space take that price down by like 50 times like lower it by by a factor of 50 hmm. which means that the cost of delivering goods travel they're like you could travel to, to to Tokyo in like three hours. Wow! With with what they're doing, look at look at, look at the art. Jugs pulling all these articles up that are talking about it. Look at that yeah. SpaceX Starship blew up after launch. It also caused catastrophic damage on the ground. By all <laughs> measures, this was a massive success for SpaceX. Dude, you you hear them talking about it, like oh, oh my they, god, it was. I just read it. articles all the time. It was like Mashable, Tech Crunch, like all these like tech magazines. Like we'll find any and Crazy. every opportunity to just throw shade and just dig. And even, you know, especially Twitter and all that kind of stuff. But like, this just, again, is another huge weird. example of that. It's, it's crazy. so weird. I mean, I, it was all in that Sal's talking about. And I had the same experience because it happened, right? I think while we were in Utah, right? It happened when yeah. we were in Utah. And I saw the articles next day come out. And, I, and, and you know, guilty. I saw the headlines. Didn't read deeper, dive into it, and yeah. just assume like, oh, man, that sucks for Elon. Like, that was a huge failure. Then I'm watching All In Podcast this morning. They have the guys in there that are, you know, one of them's a major investor. Another guy's one of the guys, well, engineers, I think, in the company. And they're like damn near in tears because they're so emotionally excited and happy and saying like, this will become one of the most monumental days in history in, in pursuit of like space travel because of the technology that we proved already and what we're going to be able to build on. And then they actually explain the process of when you launch a rocket that is completely new technology, the learning curve of that, like you, it is going to blow. You up. have a one goal, which is like, can we get it off the platform? Yes. And can we get it here? And then you get data each time. Yeah. And this is how you iterate. So you, yeah, you, you're able to quantify that. So they exceeded, improve. they exceeded, but like their stock exploded. Everybody yeah. thinks exploded because investors know like, oh, this is a huge success. Yeah. The media covered it like it was this terrible thing. It's so crazy. The like the media bias against Elon Musk is really interesting and strange. Like for people who don't think that there's a bias, like just yeah. look at the media. It's really strange. He used to be like the media darling because he was like pro green energy. Yeah, it was really the instant Twitter cars. and all that became an interest to his. The everybody crazy. turned on him. Yeah. It's so crazy. I don't know. I'm I'm mad at myself for not going Same. with my gut and betting more on yeah. that guy because I even have allowed the media to like probably you know persuade me to not like continue to double and triple down on him 
because what where Tesla's gone, I mean, think of you invested in Tesla just three, four years ago. Like, yeah. <laughs> where where you'd be at? SpaceX, same thing. Twitter, probably. Yeah. Well, let's soon. look at it was you mentioned that in San Francisco that they just passed um, those uh, automatic cars, the uh, automated taxi automated service. Taxis. So, Doug, maybe you can find it in San Francisco. There's a company that just got approval. Okay, so how is that going to happen? Like with the integration with uh, I, I asked you guys before, like how long were like horse and buggies on the road at the same time? That You're car driving next to a car or a taxi that doesn't have anybody in it like this is going to be really weird literally pick you up and drive around all automated all self-driving and it's going to be happening in the city alongside like now or is that like the now. first the first approval process no 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 no, no. I'm, if i'm not mistaken maybe doug could see uh no that's not look up a news articles around this doug if you go to the top you could click well that said something right there no. news uh oh, oh right well, there, right that there. One. npr Scroll NPR drivers tax. That's a 2022 article there. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, um, maybe click on news, but it's pretty wild. According to this article I read, like this is happening, and it's happening very soon. Yeah. That's gonna be really weird. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's a whole new dimension to, uh, you know, what we have out there to to access. Like I, I mean, Uber was a huge thing, right? And then now it's like, well, what if we don't need drivers? And we just uh, that's, that's, that was in the BBC in 2022. So I heard that they already have data on this. So I heard someone talking. I think I sent the article. Justin was the only one that commented on it about Tesla stock still going to be worth 10x more in the next five years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And well, one of the reasons on why this. is because they're leading the way on yeah. these driverless cars. And I guess they already have data on the uh, likelihood of a crash in um, half a million miles, the human versus the oh, self yeah. And it's like... It's way different. Dwarfs, yeah. dwarfs it. Of dwarfs, course, like yeah. the, the the human the, error like eliminates so much. It, yep. yeah. yeah, and and if if that's true, yeah. and they and they build off of that, like it, it's going to happen a lot so sooner than I anticipated because it was like a major difference. Yeah. It was like it was something like I five, believe it, dude. <laughs> driving around and just seeing um, traffic and how it starts and like my frustration. It's with all that. human error. Yeah, it's human error. Yeah, yeah. You know, people don't realize just how much it's going to change um, society. Like, first of all, the car itself. God, I love driving. The car, the car know, itself is going like to change. I like to drive, dude. I'm, That's I'm so good driving. But think about it this way: like when you get in a car, it's driver centric, right? You have your driver, your passenger. Yeah, it'll never people. be like that again. It's not going to look like that. I already thought about it right now when we were we were talking about this and we're driving from Utah. I thought the way it's going to be designed is you two would have been turned around and we'd all be facing like yeah. in a. Like You'll a, get a meeting car yeah, or a like restaurant a car, yeah. yeah, or a music car or whatever you want. It's not going to look anything like. Yeah, nobody cars cares down. about that. I mean, too, they're probably not going to want to give you access to a wheel, you know, because then that'd be a liability for the company. Yeah, yeah. What, what is that? Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of another example of if we're in that we've seen something like just go away, like the horse and carriage and the automobile. I mean, were there a bunch of people that are like, man, I like to sit on the wagon and hold the reins. I'm going to miss that. Like, is, Actually, that, there, was a is there always that? Like, am I, am, I, am I that guy right now where I'm like, man, I, I love- just really miss the smell. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, is it like, seriously, is there, was, was it like that? Like, I have it, a deep connection with my horse. I, mean, I, 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 I actually, car. I really like to drive. You know, hence why I'm into cars and stuff like that. I love, I actually enjoy driving. You're going to be the people <clears> that like horses now. You're going to have like a stable of cars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, hey, we're going to be cars. the, the, the equestrian cool. drivers. <laughs> my property will have like its own little yeah. indie lap. We're going to go drive around my yeah, cars. And we drive around my property. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll come drive my cars. <laughs> that's so remember, weird. guys, that's, remember? Yeah. That's going to suck. That's that so will bad. suck, dude. That's going to suck. Or, or, you know, to your point, though, maybe there will be. Uh, Des just like you would with a horse, go somewhere back country right over there. There'll be designated roads, yeah, where self driving cars like, like are allowed. Rally tracks, and yeah. Stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's going to make shipping super inexpensive. Uh, it's going to take away the fatalities in driving. Drunk driving isn't going to probably exist anymore, right? Yeah, you'll be able to get that's on a, a big one. You'll be yep. able to get on a car. Oh yeah, totally drunk. They'll probably, be, they'll probably be bars. They're probably going to be cars. You have to be twenty one or older, and you can get in there and drive around the city while drinking. That's going to be so funny. That's cool. <laughs> That's the circle. irony. Circle. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. so I found weird? a recent article here. They've uh, completed thousands of journeys in San Francisco, taking people to work, to school, and to and from dates. They have also proven to be a glitchy nuisance, snarling traffic, and creeping into hazardous terrain such as construction zones and down power lines. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of glitches and things right now. You want to know what's funny? Uh -huh. I bet you... So here's what's interesting about this, right? I bet you, I'm guessing, I don't know this, but if you look at the percentage of their cars that did that with the amount of miles that they drove, probably less accidents and less mistakes than the humans would. 
But because well, it's one company, one of their cars took down a power line. You know. Well, that's the that's the stat that, that that's the stat that this um, executive gave. I don't remember who, who yeah. in, in relation to the company who they were with that, but they were rattling off all this stuff that I just didn't know. Yeah. And it, you know, I I I assumed one of the hardest hurdles was going to be that yeah that they could prove that this this automated vehicle would be a better driver than a human being that would have instinct to react, but they basically are proving that they're showing that you know this automated car drives X amount of like millions of miles before it has its first hiccup where mm -hmm. it does something like that, where a human has it way yeah, and more and I wonder frequently. how many times it repeats the same mistake or they, you know, go back, they Re iterate, they make sure they reinforce the code. Learns from it. Learns from it. Yeah. And so then it going forward never uh, repeats the you, same. You, you know, in the past, you mentioned how people reacted to cars. Did you know that they thought that if a, that if a person went faster than 60 miles an hour, I think it was, that they would die? It was like a belief. Like they were like, yeah, no, no, you can't go that fast. The human <laughs> body can't Your maintain. skeleton just... It was 88 miles an hour. Explodes. That's where the Back to the Future thing came. Yeah. You cannot go over 88 miles an hour or you'll go back in time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there probably was it like a belief. The, there like was. No, I, I swear to God, somebody made like a fast train or a car and people were like freaking out. Uh, yeah, ima that. imagine that if you had something like that where, you know, at that well, time... I feel like that when The I was fastest, going. like what's the fastest <laughs> animal on Jeez. the planet at that time was like a cheetah or something yeah. like that. You're like, man, like imagine if we... If you ever traveled 70, that would yeah. be... <laughs> Your head would explode. Yeah. 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 Do we have any uh, shout outs? So uh, a shout out today. Um, obviously, when we started this, the idea was to shout out more than just people. We shout out people on Instagram a lot, but I also wanted to shout out like articles that we read or a book. Um, I hadn't been reading that much, and so I hadn't much to share around that. But I have been lately in our, on our flights, I did. And Mike Matthews, so shout out to Mike who shared this over to me the other day and it was it's the book's called uh die with zero and the author is bill perkins and it's just a, i think it's a really good read um it just it's a it's a different thought process around saving money and spending money uh, i have a lot of respect for mike almost every book he's ever referenced to me i've thoroughly enjoyed and so of course i gave this one a shot i'm almost done with it and it's been a great read so check that book out Hey, check this out. Continual glucose monitors can be used to monitor your glucose and then attach those to things like cravings, how you feel, the foods you eat to help you eat a diet that is great for fat loss. Now, here's the challenge. How do you put all that together to help yourself get to the point where you just eat healthy and you feel great? Well, work with NutriSense. This is a company that uses CGMs with certified nutrition experts to help you lose body fat, feel better, improve your health and get better glucose measurements. In other words, improve your insulin sensitivity. Go check them out. Go to NutriSense.io forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get $30 off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Patrick from Texas. Patrick, what's happening? How can we help you, man? Hey, um, first of all, my, well, my question is, I don't know how to turn the switch off. <laughs> um, real quick, my background I'm 42 years old. I'm five foot six, 150 ish pounds. I vary a lot. I am what you would call a hybrid athlete. I run a lot, cycle a lot, and I lift a lot of weight. So I have a lot of passions. Um, age 40, 2020, when hell broke loose, I was diagnosed with cancer. I, I um, went six months through the chemotherapy. And thanks to you guys, I still, you kept me going and I still worked out. Did a lot of band workouts that, that y'all recommended because the gyms are closed. And um, so got through chemo November 2020 and started lifting weights again. I got a home gym and everything. And I instantly started training for my marathon. So um, I, I have the passion of lifting weights and running a lot. <laughs> so I know when I need to rest, but I go in the gym and I start lifting to go easy. And next thing you know, I'm running, I'm jamming, slipping out super loud and I'm waking up my neighbors and I don't know how to turn that switch off. <laughs> so you're talking to wrong people. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> no, yeah, yeah I know. And that's why I'm, but see, I, I, I like y'all's mindset of like, go, go easy for the most, for the best results and see, yeah, I kind of have that. I want to go hard on everything. Yeah, I but do. this is Maybe. not a this is obviously not a results uh, driven um, uh, relationship you have with exercise. So let me. Ask, no. By the way, congratulations on um, on beating cancer. I'm I'm glad to to hear that you got through that, especially during Thank that you. weird time. You're probably not able to be around a lot of people. So that's a uh, good job. Oh, uh, I still worked. 
Oh, good. Okay. Well, good. I, I tell you, um, you got to figure out what you're running from when you're working out like that. That's really yeah. the only way you're going to be able to turn that switch off. Otherwise, this is your drug and you're using your drug to, um, I don't know, medicate. run from something, medicate yourself, numb yeah. yourself, distract yourself. So well, go ahead. Here, here's my thing. I did back uh, from my 20s and early 30s. I did party a lot. I drank a lot. And around 35, I found fitness. I've always worked out and whatnot, but I, I like found fitness and I just quit drinking. And and then I, I kind of went moderate, you know, I cycled a lot and lifted weights. But once I got through with uh, chemotherapy, that's when I started going hard. Like I, that's like I jumped from chemo to training for the marathon. And like I said, lifting weights and I just didn't know how to turn it off before cancer. I did. Now I can't. And I think it's kind of, I think some of it is uh, trying to prove to myself that I can still do stuff at yeah. my age and after what I've been through, but I just, I can't figure out how to turn it off. <laughs> yeah, man. Look, it, uh, stop listening to Slipknot. First of all, <laughs> as, as much as we all love that, maybe switch it over to yeah, Sal's uh, Inya playlist. It's a good band. Yeah. No, you're, there you go. you're, um, <laughs> it's scary, man. What you went through was scary. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and it's not that long ago, bro. No, so you're, you're probably still have some empathy. home base is fitness for you too. So yeah. that's tough because it's definitely yeah. somewhere you want to, you know, steer yourself back to. And I, I get like how you're, you know, really passionate about like trying to make sure that like, that's a big part of your everyday lifestyle. So, so I, yeah. I, I, I have something for you because there are other modes of health and fitness that you can kind of like, like, for example, um, shifting your mind to like, like, a, like a mobility challenge. Right. So like you see these all over the internet. I did one a long time ago where I hopped up from my knees and did a pistol squat and picked up some dumbbells or whatever. Right. Like mm -hmm. maybe because you have that kind of obsessive, uh, obsessive personality, maybe do something that's a little more recuperative for your body instead mm -hmm. of something that's hammering it so much, allow yourself to be obsessive about it to where you're, you're thinking about it, you're working on it, you're doing something like that, but it be more recuperative for the body than something that is so stressful as running and, you know, PRing and hitting, you know, training to failure with the weights all the time and become like this super mobility guy. Uh, I mean, and that's tough. I know to make that transition, but that, yeah. that's, that served me really well to, you know, use my competitive, you know, kind of athletic mindset with something like that, that I know I'm not going to do damage to myself. So that, that would be a suggestion is to, you know, kind of go deep on something like that. Or, or like Justin's really good with like the unconventional stuff. Like, I don't know if you've ever got into kettlebells and mace bells and I, I have that in my garage. Okay. So yeah. yeah, like, I mean, like I, you could totally try and become like a master at look, that and it, really master those movements. Look, Patrick, yeah. extra, like what you're doing now is better than drinking alcohol, but yeah. you know, here's the thing, what Adam is telling you to do, it's like you're an alcoholic and you love tequila and he's like, Hey, switch to beer because it's way less, yeah. bad for you. You could drink the same volume, get less alcohol, but it's still alcohol, right? It's still, you're, you still have to work, figure out, uh, look, what, what's going on with your relationship to exercise. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to guess it's not so much the PRs and the performance, but more the pain and the drive and the getting that. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> now look, here's the deal. The data shows quite clearly that exercise itself is an effective form of therapy. Okay. But like all therapies, like all modes of or, or, or methods of therapy, you can get only so much out of a, a particular type. And then you got to yeah. you got to try something else. OK, you went through something really scary. Mm -hmm. And before that, you had some issues with uh, with substances, which tells me you probably were dealing with stuff beforehand as well. Yeah, wait. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Are you seeing somebody um, to, that can, that you, like, are you seeing yeah. a therapist or account? Okay. That's the first, that's what hundred percent where I'd, I'd send you to go hundred mm -hmm. percent. Go see somebody who's an expert working with trauma. Find yourself a trauma therapist, change nothing. Keep doing your workouts, go beat yourself up. That's fine. But go see a trauma therapist and that, that should address the root. And then you should notice that you may at some point, you'll start to address the workouts themselves. Cause I could give you suggestions yeah. with workouts, but it's your drug right now. And it's, yeah. it's, look, and here's the deal. Here's the deal. A lot of people don't realize this, but, um, self-medicating is, uh, uh, medicating. 
So if I take away your workout, like you, you, it's probably what's keeping you going right now, as damaging as it oh, may yeah. be. Yeah. So I don't want to take it away from you without something there that's going to uh, address what's going on as a fallback. Um, and I know as a man, therapy can be hard. You're going to sit down and you're probably a go-getter. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't want to ask this person advice or tell them whatever. I can go do this. Um, so it's going to be hard, but find a specifically, find a trauma therapist, somebody who deals with PTSD or trauma and, um, and go start working with them. It's going to be a long process, but I don't see any other way out of this other than like white knuckling it, you, yeah. you know, through it, which is what you're already doing. Well, it's a psychological well, kind of sticking point, right? Yeah. At that point. So well, it, I think that's, that's pretty sound advice. And it, it's a hard one because like you said, like it's, it's more of an ego thing for a lot of guys to like admit that, uh, you know, I need to talk my way through this and really like dive into that, uh, deeply. And, and so this is something that I've even had to go through this myself. And so it's just, I'd look at it more as like, I'm, I'm improving, uh, myself on, you know, uh, in, in multiple dimensions. So this is just another dimension that I'm addressing that obviously yeah. it's been filtering its way into, you know, your physical pursuits and things. So this would be yeah. something that'd be Patrick, very helpful. Here's why I said, don't change your workouts because um if if you go to a therapist knowing that it's gonna they're gonna make you work out less and right now you're like i don't want to do that you're not gonna want to see a therapist no because you're not ready to that, touch that that is true okay so now don't touch anything go talk to somebody just start there sorry go ahead i i i am starting my neck i am a distance runner um after right after i think i did my marathon exactly a year after remission then i did a trail race last year now I'm doing the Houston marathon again. So I remember when I, and I was still in recovery, but like when I was training for 2022 marathon, I was still lifting weights and I did feel a huge burnout. I was running 50, 60 miles a week and then going to the gym right afterwards. Yeah. So I, and lifting weights to me, it's a passion. So even if my focus is running, I'm still going to lift weights. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not shot stick, shot stick. Do just do one day a week, two days a week. Uh, yeah, look, I could tell you what to do, but you're not going to do it. I, look, uh, yes, once a week, but you're going to abuse it. I'm just going to tell you, right. I know this. I know this, Patrick, because I've worked yeah. with a lot of people like you. So sure. okay. I think you know what to do, but okay. um, uh, you're probably going to, you know, you might do it for a little while. Oh, they told me to do this on, on Mind Pump, and then you're going to, it's going to creep back into overdoing it. So uh, I'm going to stick to what I said. Go, go see somebody okay. and change nothing. I don't care. Go beat yourself up. But go talk to somebody uh, that's a trauma specialist, and that should help you deal with this if you're ready to deal with it. Now, if you're not ready to deal with it, I get it. Um, yeah. In that case, I would say try to mitigate what you're doing with as much focus on recovery as you know, beating yourself up, um, like sleep and nutrition and massage and ice bath and that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, strength training once a week would probably be uh, ideal okay. for you, moderate intensity. But, um, you know, like I said, I don't think you're going to do what I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, now you're, 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 now you're circling back to what I said, and that's the reason yeah. why I said it. Yeah. I mean, I just, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to get you to go from, you know, binge drinking tequila yeah. to just having some beers. Some actionable yeah. things. Yeah, have yeah. some beers right now. Yeah. Well, but the truth is none of that addresses yeah. the root cause until you, you work on the things that led to the abusing substance, what has led to the abuse of even fitness. And so the, the, that has to happen at one point, whether yeah. you, you find someone to confide in, have that conversation, or you learn to have that conversation yourself, or you hire somebody to, to do that, that has to happen or else it'll just resurface in other now, ways. Look, I'm going to say this, cause I think this is, this might help you. Um, you probably, um, identify and, and rightly so I would say that you're, you are this person, but you probably identify with being a fighter, a survivor, like you ain't gonna, like you ain't gonna stop me. You know, I'm gonna, nothing will stop me. I'm gonna keep going until I die, type of thing. So, yeah. okay, look at what I said because I know right now I'm talking to you. I can tell that you're like, no, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep doing <laughs> what I do. Look at it and say, okay, this thing that Sal's telling me to go talk to somebody, I really don't want to do it. This is harder than my workouts. This is way harder than my workouts. I'm a survivor. I'm a fighter. I'm going to do the thing mm -hmm. that's harder. So if you identify with being a fighter, then you got to go do the mm -hmm. harder thing. And the harder thing is not your workouts. That's easy for you. The harder yeah. thing is what I said. So. Also, also recognize that 
by doing this, you you you're you're building a new level of resiliency. So someone like you also likes that ability that you can. I mean, by the way, it's a superpower. Uh, we're we're all talking to ourselves right now yeah, too. Totally. So there's 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 a there's a Completely part of you related, that we yeah. all identify greatly with. Totally. So this is uh, and that's just it. Is like you're not giving anything up. You're not like what you're going to do. And it was kind of I think what Justin said is like you're. You're just going to add uh, a new tool to your tool belt, and you're going to be even better and more resilient because you now know how to see these things and these behaviors that maybe you didn't see before. And it doesn't mean like you're going to cut out your hardcore training. It's just you're going to have a better yeah. balance and understanding of what drives you and motivates you and know when to throttle down and when to You'll throttle be able back. To navigate yeah. better. Yeah. But you can literally do this. You can find somebody and you can sit down with them and you can say this, literally. You can say, look, here's the deal. I'm not going to change my workouts. I'm not going to change my lifestyle. I love doing the stuff, but I know I need to talk to somebody. That's it. Just start yeah. right there. And you and, and, and just start there and see what happens. That's it. Yeah. And maybe turning down the slipknot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe switch to Enya for a little bit. I mean, yeah. Do some Jimmy Eat <laughs> World. Yeah. 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 Bring it down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, look, yeah. do you have Maps Prime Pro? I want to give you something that might prevent you from hurting yourself if you, if you can use it. Do you have that? No, I do not. Um, I did. You're... When I was going through chemo, I did the only one I have is the uh, at home one. Um, Maps anywhere. Okay, I'll send you, I'm going to send you Prime Pro because I, I, there's mobility stuff in there. If you really want to get crazy with recovery, yeah, that I think will help you. My, my wife is a yoga instructor, so oh, cool. I do need to hey, take advantage right. of her classes. Oh yeah, that's great. You got to hang out with her more. <laughs> yeah, Doug's yeah. going to send you Prime Pro, and then I want you actually to look at Maps 15 as a, p a potential thing to complement your lifestyle. I, yeah, I was actually going to get Maps 15 okay. a while back when I was like started training look into that but yeah i think that would be i have a gym here at work that i can go down on my lunch break and use because i'm gonna run in the mornings and lift in the afternoons but so i was gonna i was thinking about that yeah. but um but yeah patrick how long have you been married we 2019 i need i shouldn't have second guessed that <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> actually i i started coughing my symptom of lymphoma on, on our first anniversary trip wow oh my god wow. Wow, wow. So you've been And married. then I got diagnosed three months later on my fortieth birthday. And you made it through it together. Man. Yeah. Plus she uh solid. she was on my side. She's pretty badass. She sounds like yeah. an amazing woman. Awesome. Would she agree she would she agree with my advice, Patrick? Yes, because she hears me grunting in the garage. Okay. <laughs> hey man, listen. Listen to your wife. Yeah. That's she true. loves you. Um, Obviously she loves you. They're right sometimes, dude. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> By the way, um, admit, but yes. When I was in, I was going through chemo. I went back and listened to all y'all's uh, old oh, stuff from oh 2015. <laughs> I love it. Uh -huh. I love it. Uh, appreciate it. You really do like us. Off then. the rails. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Patrick. I, appreciate I would sit there and just listen to all the old stuff. So, hey, man, I appreciate you calling in. Man. I'm glad to hear that you made it through. That. Hey, yeah. circle back with glad us. I'd, re story, I'd really man. like to hear where you're at in about three to six months, too. Okay, circle back with us. Let us know how things are going. Oh, I'm gonna be running a lot. You'll hate me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Right. Take it thank, easy, man. Thank you. All right, brother. He ain't, he ain't ready to deal with yeah, we'll what see. he's saying. We'll I, I mean, at least he, he says it, but he's not ready to deal with yeah. it. Um, I get it. I get it, bro. Like, the, the place you really don't want to look is always a place you need to look. That's a hard, like you said, like, that really is the hardest thing you can do. Like, if you're into, like, you know, being uncomfortable, mm. doing the the thing that's going to move the needle the most, like, that that's one of them. Like, for men especially, it's just like, oh, hell no, I'll do our, everything else. Yeah. Our only yeah. hope is that the wife listens to this. I was just going to say that, and, and I'm like, but he's not going to let her listen. I hope, I hope, I hope <laughs> he does. Okay, Patrick, she should be able to listen to this, let her listen to this, because she will be, I think, our she ally. Yeah. She'll be our ally, because if even if he ignores it, continues to do what he's doing, uh, it will, and it doesn't hurt him injury wise. Like that it'll bleed into the relationship, yeah. and then she'll remember this conversation and go, "Remember those three really smart guys that were trying <laughs> to tell you what to do?" <laughs> yeah, dude. I think it's time you listen to them if you still want to have a wife around. So that's uh, yeah. so make sure you keep her uh, in in the loop and share this with her too, because I think she'll be an. But ally. I mean, that's rough, bro. What he made it through, like, yeah, he might not be ready to face that shit. Well, that's why. For so that's years. the direction I was going, right? So that's why, I'd like, I just man. don't think he's gonna listen to anything. I think we're gonna tell him, and so he's gonna I, go beat him. Up. I don't necessarily believe that. I think so. I've had success with people like this. I, I think I definitely I trained a lot of people like this. And 
it is with one it, conversation though. You well, no, that, coach that, well, that's why time. I try to switch them to beer, and you wanted to be like, no, go, go <laughs> hey, buddy, who, who's never done therapy in your life before? It's not even beer; it's non-alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, I just, you know, I was just trying to get him to transition yeah. in, in a better, more recuperative, instead of punishing yourself type yeah. of direction by using that kind of competitiveness that he has. I just have had more success that way, and then I'm, of course, what you guys know, is you know, coaches, in fact, you're moving, you're, you're, yeah, exactly. As I'm coaching him through the process, because yeah. I'm seeing him, I'm also doing therapy along the way. So hopefully he goes and, and hires somebody. Our next caller is Kyle from Guam. Kyle, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, just wanted to say, first of all, I've been a huge fan of you guys for the past years. Listen to you guys practically all the time. Um, the question I have for you gentlemen today is how can I incorporate long distance cardio without sacrificing my my muscle gain so i have um a pretty high metabolism i've struggled to gain weight over the past years uh right now i sit at 220 and i have to consume like 3k calories daily to maintain this weight if i don't then i'll drop off and recently i got picked up for the police department and you know there's a lot of long distance running and Wanted to see if you guys had any input on how I can incorporate that in my current workouts without uh, necessarily, I guess, ha having to run. Kyle, Kyle yeah. this is the um, police academy that you're in right now? Yes, sir. How long is that for? Nine months. Okay. And they make you run every day, right? Yes, sir. Is it yeah. just two miles? Uh. It it's it's gone up to seven, oh. so there's no no telling. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. A, a couple things. Um, scale back your strength training because a lot of times people make the mistake of thinking right. that they lift more when they do more of this stuff to try and preserve the muscle, but that's actually the opposite of what you need to do. So if you're running uh, five days, is it five days a week, Monday through Friday? Yes, sir. All right. I would lift twice a week, full body. That'll do better at preserving muscle mass. Increase your calories. Or a MAPS 15. Uh, MAPS 15 would be another good program. That would be another way to do it, just 15 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose some muscle, but when you're done with the police academy, it'll come right back. So that's the other thing. I mean, you might lose some in order to go through the, the, the academy training. It'll come right back when you're done, though. Have some liquid calories before you go to. Oh yeah, and post right. So right after, right before you run, get some liquid calories in. Right afterwards, get some liquid calories in, uh, so you're not depleted either. So that that'll help. But mm -hmm. you know, nine months of doing this, uh, you know, seven miles is a little high. Two miles is not a big deal. Two three miles, you're on, that's under thirty minutes. Uh, that's not that that's not that big of a deal, especially if you take the advice Sal saying is and not make the mistake of trying to lift more weights because you're afraid you're gonna lose muscle if you if you follow like a maps 15 or scale back a little bit you stay fed before and after um you know you might just get more shredded i don't know how lean you are right now but mm. you know you, you could potentially hang on to most of that muscle and just lean out nicely but if you do seven miles and you do more of those and you do two miles it, it's inevitable you're going to lose some some muscle along the way but it should come right back if you take really good care of you a lot and you stay consistent with the the training uh, while you do it and stay fed. Yeah, I like the MAPS 15 angle, just, you know, just enough dose of stimulus for your muscles to respond and keep that anabolic signal alive. But like you're really focused primarily on your aerobic training at this point because, you know, you're preparing yourself for this. Uh, you know, rubber bands are really good for, you know, adding and providing that kind of stimulus with not a lot of damage. So to consider that in, in terms of incorporating that as well for your strength training, I think would go far. Do you have MAPS 15, Kyle? Uh, no, sir, I don't. All right, we'll send that to you. Um, and I think, I think that is going to be the best program for you while you're doing it. But remember, it's only nine months. It's a police academy. Yeah. And yeah. after you're done, and I don't know why police departments do this. Mm. It's like- Nine months and then- well, I don't know baby. why they do this. Like when in ever are you going to be chasing down a subject, uh, you know, a suspect for seven miles? It doesn't work that way. It's usually a sprint. Yeah. So I, yeah. I really, this is just out to police departments. And I know why it's an easy way to get someone more fit. It doesn't require much programming, but like they need to focus more on like sprinting, mobility- you know, hit style training, you know, and then of course they do that because most chases, uh, are not 
You know, you might run a couple miles max. You ain't do no seven mile foot race yeah. to catch somebody. It's, 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 it's almost you get never a car for that. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. almost never going to happen. Um, so you I know, tell you, every run a mile, dude. You run the first hundred yard <laughs> dash, and if he's separating himself from you, you probably ain't getting him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah so, jumping over fences. Yeah. yeah, so but you know, that's, but that's it. I mean, you know, it's nine months. After that, it'll come right back. I wouldn't worry too much about it. And in the meantime. Don't overcompensate by doing more weight training. Yeah, that's That'll make you lose muscle. That's the biggest mistake you can make that I think I probably would have made at your age yeah. is thinking that, oh, shit, I'm going to be doing all this running. I should also uh, lift, more. lift more. And I mean, this was my experience. Obviously, I wasn't yeah, running. I was playing basketball, and that's what I did was lift more, and just all I did was get leaner and smaller. I have a similar metabolism. The first thing that I did was scale back three days of my lifting, yeah. and I added 10 pounds of muscle. So don't make the mistake of thinking more weight training is going to help you retain more muscle. Okay. Got it. Thanks, Jens. You got it, man. All right, man. Good, good, luck, man. good, yeah, luck. good luck to you, dude. Yep. I appreciate it. You got it. All right, Kyle. Yeah. Sometimes I look at the, I've trained a few people through police academies. And, and it, I mean, I know what they're trying to do. They're basically trying to wean out people that won't be able to perform at all. Although it doesn't, they don't seem to keep it up because mm. then later you see veterans and you're like, you don't even run no two miles. You can't even run. 10 feet. How did this happen? Yeah. But the training needs to be yeah. more specific, you know, um, because it's more going to be like sprints than it is going to be these long totally. runs. Oh, yeah. so which, like I said, it's a hundred yard, 100, after a hundred yard dash, the, you're either staying close to your, your suspect or he's gone. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And if he's already got, he's already got a huge lead on you and he's darting in and out of places and hopping fences, you ain't going to run seven no. miles looking for him. Yeah. I think like <laughs> you said, it's the thought process is like, you know, less programming we have to like implement. Also, yeah. it's going to get him to lose weight and yep, it's yep, difficult. Yep. So totally. It's like, yeah, but in terms of it being more specific and applicable, like if they did more those like short, like fast twitch yep. kind of like training yep. would be a lot. And that's, that's good for people who officers watching now who are at a academy yeah. and kind of now it's up to them to maintain yeah. the kind of fitness that they need. You Absolutely. Know? Our next caller is Sarah from California. Sarah, what's happening? How can we help you? Oh, wow. Um, I was all calm going into this, but now I see you guys. This is actually kind of, I'm starstruck a little bit. Uh -huh. Just a tad. <laughs> um, but thank you. Honestly, seriously, thank you for what you do because my pump played a huge hand in digging me out of a grave, out of depression, alcoholism back in 2019. So wow. I'm living my best life Amazing. now. Amazing. Hell yeah. And I definitely do it way more than I ever dreamed of. So now I have the first world problem of wondering how to optimize this life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. So what should I do off season when I'm not running maps OCR? Okay. Do you compete in OCR events? I mean, yes and no. Sometimes I do age group, um, but sometimes I do the open waves. Right now I'm definitely not age group ready because my line of work is a little maybe too high stress to really make me kick so much ass anymore like it's if i train anymore it takes away from my job performance okay what, well, do, you, what, what do you do um i'm a driving coach like a like a like get your license driving coach or like a sports performance like drive like kind of driving coach are you uh one of these <laughs> oh, oh wow really oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah no way <laughs> yeah it's badass so, so how do we sign up? Where do yeah. we, how, yeah, how do we see? Are you going to take us around in a Porsche? That sounds freaking awesome. Well, uh, it's better to talk offline about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll email you That's later fair. on. Okay, yeah. got you. Yeah. Okay, okay awesome. got you. Well, okay, so if you're, if you're not doing a race um, f and you want to just maintain that level of kind of like mobility I mean, maps OCR and, and fitness, and I mean, MAPS OCR, MAPS, maps Cardio, MAPS Performance, those are all great programs. You can literally cycle through those three. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, maybe throwing MAPS Symmetry here and there for that mm -hmm. level of fitness. And then when you're in season, MAPS OCR seems to be much more specific. But yeah, the, I like the, Symmetry in there for sure. Yeah, the issues, um, the challenges are going to be things like mobility, joint health, and mm -hmm. not overtraining. Those will be the three yeah. main factors um, that I would focus on. So I would save the real hard training for getting ready for a race. But in between, yeah. I think more recuperative, like mm -hmm. what feels good, what makes my joints feel good, what gives me, you know, good, healthy energy, 
And then when you have a race, then you can scale it up uh, to, to maximize performance. I guess I would ask more, too, on if you have any specific goals, too, because there's because it doesn't sound like you're like so hardcore about OCR. All you care about is winning trophies. You like, sound like you like it, you love it, you do it as, as like a fun thing to train for. Do you have other goals, uh, either aesthetic or performance related that you care about right now? Well, I mean, the, it would be nice to get under 18% body fat, but I find that cutting like on the food part, I get grouchy. I know that it's not going to work. I like eating and it would be nice to get my squat to 200 pounds, a uh, deadlift. I'm already at the goals that I want to be. Um, I'm already doing like 225 on my deadlifts, but squat, I would love 200. Um, I also rock climb. I dirt bike, um, or I, I'm just getting into that. So those are some of the other things that I like to like, just maintain. And plus I'm dealing with a recent Hashimoto's diagnosis and element T by the way, has actually really helped with that. Yeah. So, <laughs> awesome. That's excellent. So those um, are the, uh, the notes that I have. Um, do you, do you, do you tend to overtrain? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah that's, there's, there's a connection there with the Hashimoto's mm -hmm. or autoimmune issues and uh, like too much stress, too much working out. Um, so I would, you know, with your workouts, I would really focus on because you, it sounds like you really enjoy the 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 outdoor stuff, the fun stuff, like the rock climbing, the dirt bike, the, like that's the stuff you really enjoy the most, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just love being outdoors and I know that going 10 tenths all the time is not good. No. I've learned to dial it down, but I know I could probably still dial it down a little bit more. Like with MAPS OCR even, it's a five day a week workout yep. program, but I don't do the five days because I know four is much healthier for me. Oh, that's cool. Five, I just, I can't do that without it affecting job performance. Well, that's good. If, that's how, good many awareness, day, awareness, how many days yeah. a week do you do these other activities? Like these, uh, like, like all this, out, this outdoor stuff. So the, the skill day for MAPS OCR, I don't do that. Because on like two days out of the week, on top of uh, the other OCR days, I'll throw in maybe 15 minutes of like rock climbing. Like that's mm -hmm. it. Because the gym I go to has a really good workout space, um, but it's a rock climbing gym per oh, se. Like that's cool. Yeah. Cool. And then the the bike stuff, I just got into it, so that's not even that, that's not really happening right now. All right, in a perfect world, because you look, I want you to focus on what you enjoy. You look fit already. You're lean. Um, oh, so. I'm <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So in a perfect world, how many days a week, forget working out. Okay. How many days a week would you rock climb, focus on the biking and, you know, other fun stuff like that? Like, what would that look like if you were just doing, like, if you were just being active for fun? If I was being active for fun, I would work out six days a week. <laughs> 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 like, honestly, but I, I know that that's not, that's not doable. <laughs> Yeah. Perfect world if I had a million amounts of energy. Yeah. Now forget the workout. I mean, the like, like, the, like going out and rock climbing and being active. Forget the dirt, workout. Rock, rock climbing, dirt bike riding. Yeah. Like, like how often would you want to do that stuff? I would love to do that like every single week. Like, like at least one of those things every single week. Climb and um, and ride. I would place almost entirely your your focus with workouts like gym stuff on mm -hmm. mobility, maintaining stability and uh recovery and then i would just add days of the stuff that you enjoy i can tell you have so much enjoyment out of doing those things and that's a nice balance by the way rock climbing biking ocr like you're getting a lot of functional work in there i don't see mm -hmm. you developing imbalances because you do one thing all the time and then you know one day a week you could do traditional strength training just to keep yourself strong and I'd focus a lot on the other days on, on just mobility. And what that's going to do, it's going to give you the energy and strength and performance to be able to do all the fun stuff even more often. And you'll probably find that your body will respond as a result. Because I'm, I, I can imagine, I, I'm going to guess that you're probably always teetering on the line of overdoing it. I am so close always, yeah. but I have to reel myself back constantly. Um, but I've gotten definitely a lot better with that over, like, over the years. And I've been, ever since I started listening to you guys, um, 2019, I would really get after it. And then there would be times that I'd hurt myself, obviously, yeah. but I figured out, okay, don't push so hard, dial it down a little bit. So I, li I like maps performance and mm -hmm. you decide based off of what your activity stress at the work looks like on whether you train it one day a week or three days a week. 
Mm-hmm. And, and then the other other days are mobility days. So it addresses the mobility stuff Sal's talking about. I think Love Maps that. Performance is definitely more of your wheelhouse of what you like, and, and it will support the things you do outside uh, of the gym. And then you just have to learn to you know tell yourself like, hey, this has been a, a great rest, not a lot of stress at work. I didn't get you know, a dirt bike session in, I didn't get out there. So I'm going to train three days this week of my lip of my maps performance. Let's fast forward the next week, the next week. Oh, I got dirt bike riding in. Oh, in addition to that, it was been a stressful week at work. Oh, maybe I scale all the way back to one day. And so teeter between the one to three days of foundational training based off mm-hmm. of what your the rest of your load looks like outside of the uh, outside of the gym and then incorporate the mobility days every other day which is the, something you could do in your living room you could do it anywhere and that's really going to support your joints and support all other things beautiful you advice so in other words there's three foundational workouts and maps performance mm-hmm. treat those three days as just the hard workout days yeah. so if you do none of the rock climbing none of the biking none of the hard stuff you can do all three foundational workouts but if you do two days of the heart of the other stuff, then you're only going to do one foundational workout. If you do three days of the hard stuff, then you're going to do no foundational workouts. But the mobility sessions, you could do those every other day. Because yeah, I'll be at home and I don't have to yep. you know, exactly. head over to the gym or anything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll see your performance improve yeah. um, mm-hmm. by doing that. Yep. Oh, I so need that because I'm so bad with everything else. Okay. <laughs> Doug's going to send that over to you right now if you don't have that already. Do you not have mass performance? Uh, I'm one of those nut jobs who kind of bought almost every program. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you know, we, call, we actually call those people smart people. A hero. <laughs> That's what we, call you. we call those the smart people. You know what we're going to do then, Sarah? If you're not in our forum, we'll put you in our forum because I'd love to to just hear from you. Yeah. I'm in your forum too. Oh, <laughs> keep us up to date then. What can we sell you, yeah, yeah, Sarah, yeah. while you're on the phone? So. Yeah. You want mm-hmm. anything? I, I think like, I think the only program that I don't have is probably maps 15. Oh, that's oh. a good one for you. Oh, that would be great yeah, for you. Yeah. That's a great yeah. one for you. <laughs> we'll shoot that over to you. Yeah. Like that's the one that I, when I think about it, like, because I have a hard time with reducing like 15 minutes was so hard for me to I even, know. Buy into, but you you guys preach it. I know it, but getting my brain to no, we're gonna it. we're gonna send that to you. And by the way, there's a 20 minute like advanced version in there too that I would fit you just fine too. So we're gonna send that over to you. I think that one work, that's a great one yeah. to compliment. But I mean, look, uh-huh. you, you love this stuff so much. The idea with strength training for someone like you is how do I use it so I could do more of that other stuff and and feel mm. good. That's what you want. That's the idea. Okay. Don't look at your workouts as the fun stuff because you would much rather, it sounds like, go rock climbing, dirt bike, right? That's way more exhilarating and fun for you. So look at the strength training and mobility as a way to support that stuff so you can do that stuff as much as you want. That's that's the idea, right? That's the idea that I'm trying to sell to you. Okay. I will do my best to get this brain to accept all that. <laughs> you will. You will. You're doing great. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then email, okay. email us let us know how you could drive a Porsche. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold on. Our social in. media rules are pretty strict. So, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. My bad. Okay. My oh, bad. Well, we're already off. <laughs> right. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks All right, for, guys. All right, thanks for calling. Thank you. Okay. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny. It's like when people love doing an outdoor activity, it's like you do more of that. Use a strength training, keep yourself from getting hurt. And just do that, man. Yeah, I get. Okay, this is a second question we've had today, going through these live, you know, these live callers. That you know, that the, the, the we had the guy that was the MMA guy, right? Yeah. And I think it's we get listeners that have listened to a lot of our episodes, and we, they've probably heard us kind of harp on these people that have these like major aesthetic goals. Yeah, and then they also love combining everything together, right? But if you notice these two people we had today, the, she wasn't like, "Oh, I want to sculpt my butt, and I wish yeah. I had abs." Like she didn't even say any of that stuff. She was yeah. like, "She's all oh, performing." Like, I love doing this, right? I love doing this thing. I'm passionate about. I'm more per- performance driven, and so that that there's different advice. But mm-hmm, when yeah. I hear someone go like, "I want to look this certain way," and oh, by the way, I want to run marathons and do yeah. all these sports, like, well, that's really yeah. conflicting, you know? It's funny. I can totally relate. Like I, I weave in and out of this a lot in terms of like being. Uh, a part of an activity or something else Mm -hmm. that's like outside of just lifting weights all the time. But I always come back to lifting weights because I love it too. Uh, But it is nice to just step out and and physical activity is physical activity. I mean, if you're out there and you're doing it and you love and enjoy these these other types of uh, uh, activities you can can incorporate, like have at it. It's just a matter of like complimenting it. I I mean, honestly, in the, in, 
what's going on with our society now, and we're becoming more and more disconnected from people, disconnected from nature. I'm more pro that than I ever was. Oh, yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? I, I think more people need more activities like that in their life that we're, we're so quick yeah. now to get on our phones or be in front of the computer. Sun and or, social well, interaction. The gym, totally. The gym used to be a social environment, um, yeah. and now everybody wears headphones and right. it became an isolated environment. But look, I'll, look I'll, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Uh, nothing is more modifiable than strength training. So you can only modify rock climbing so much. You can only totally. modify cycling and swimming and running so much. But strength training, we you can tweak it, change it, modify it to make all the other stuff better. You just have to do it the right way. You can't train like a bodybuilder to make yourself better at rock climbing. You got to train with, with weights like a rock climber would to get better at rock climbing, for example. So use strength training as this amazing tool to allow you to enjoy all these other things that you like to do. Our next caller is Ashnia from the Philippines. Ashnia, how can we help you? Hi, good morning, everyone. Hi, uh, good morning. How's it going? Thanks for having me on. So excited to be here. Thank you. All right. All right, so before I continue, uh, I just would like to take the opportunity as well to say my thanks. I am actually one of your success stories from your episode of Why Women Should Bowl. Oh, you know, oh, I've hey. heard and uh, read a lot of positive information surrounding it in the past, but I never really paid attention to it and never even tried because for me, before Scale is the King, but it all changed when I discovered your show. So I just want to say thank you for changing the um, fitness message to all the women out there and for all that you do in the fitness space. So, uh, yeah, the fitness world definitely more needs more people like you. So thank you guys so much. Thank awesome. you. Thank That's you. A great compliment. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm just going to read my question. This way I will not lose my train of thoughts. Before I discovered your show, I was not having my period for more than a year already. I was under eating and overtraining, which damaged my hormones. Now, after consistently listening to your show, I realized I was doing everything wrong from training to nutrition to recovery. I did anabolic two times, uh, twice already to focus on building muscle. My first run, I did the three foundational days and quit doing cardio. Now, shortly after I finished my first run, there was a live caller with the same case. To which your advice was take a deload or a week off and do nothing but walking is fine and then run anabolic after that so i took all your uh, advice from that episode and in just two weeks i swear i got my period back it's like i'm amazed so thank you for that awesome. now i'm running uh i'm running performance i'm currently on week uh sorry phase two of performance uh Unfortunately, I lost my period again last month, so I'm not really sure if it's because I switched back to three times a week of training or oh by the way, I'm also I also started uh, the program with uh, a 500 calorie cut from my previous calorie from uh, after I run my second uh, anabolic. So yeah, my question is, should I eat more or train less or do a little bit of both? Okay, so you... Because I'm not having my period again. No, that's... Okay, great question. First off, how do you feel otherwise? How's your energy um, and sleep and libido and all that stuff? Yeah, uh, with my sleep, uh, I didn't notice any change in my sleep. I, I still sleep very well. Uh, my libido is... Uh, um, yeah, that's a problem. Okay. Did you notice a change in libido or has it just been like this consistent? Uh yeah there was a change a significant change as well okay yeah, and then when Peter. did you when did you get your period back how long has it been since you got it back so uh i had it for like two months and then i after i finished anabolic i went back uh, i started performance and then i after my first week of sorry phase one of performance uh yeah i didn't uh, had any, uh, I, I missed my period again. Okay. And then I'm assuming, after the phase I'm one. assuming you've already ruled out that you're not pregnant, right? No, no. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I had to ask that because. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's okay. So she didn't read, she didn't say it, but I'm looking up at it there too. She worked her way up from 1300 to 2100 calories. Does that mean you were, and then yeah. from 2100, did you drop back down 500? 
Yes, when yeah. I started the yeah. per, my uh, the performance. Well, there's a couple things though. There's a couple things to look at here because um, I know where you're going to go, Adam, and I I I, I agree with you. Uh, but there's more there's more to the story. So you just got your period back a couple months. When you get your yes. period back after not having it for a while, it can sometimes mm -hmm. fluctuate. So you can get it consistently for a few months. It goes away, then it comes back. So sometimes it takes a second for it to, or a little while for it to become super regular. So you only had it for two mm -hmm. months, then you lost it. But here's the second yes. part, and I know where you're going, Adam. You're, you're, you're going to mention the, the calorie cut and the increase in activity. Whatever you were doing that got your period back, I would have done that. For longer. Yeah, I would have stuck to that for a while yes. before trying to change anything. Yeah. It was it was a bit too sh too mm -hmm. quick of a change. You know, you got your period back for two months and then you changed your diet, changed your exercise. I would go yeah. back to what you were doing before. And then if you get your period back, I'd wait at least five to six months of consistent period before trying to change anything else. Because it takes a little bit for everything to normalize. That's what I figured. Uh, it was too early for me to cut my calories. Yeah. But what about the performance? I don't see any option uh, for it to uh, Am I missing something? Is there an option to do the perform? Because I really love the program, by the way. Yeah. Uh, is there an option to do it for it for just two twice a week? I mean, you, you could do that. Geez, two, you know, yeah, we two don't foundation in, yeah. in, in anabolic. You know, Sal created it with that option. calendar. Yeah, in there, but with yeah. performance, you can still do that. You can just drop one foundational yeah. day off of that. I really do think more than anything, though, it's the calorie restriction. I think 500 calories for anybody, mm -hmm. even in a healthy state for a female, is a is a big chunk of calories. Especially when you think about you were only at 2100. That's 25 percent almost of your mm -hmm. your calories. That's that's a dramatic drop. I think you easily could have just kept your calories around the same or maybe a hundred calories down and just kept mm -hmm. going and you probably would have been okay. But I, I, what was, what you were doing was working so nice. I would, I'd want to keep, I would want to keep doing that. Yeah. Your body yeah. just started to reg regulate itself. And so what you want to do in that situation is stay, keep everything the same or, I mean, I would I would even had you start to reverse diet even more. Yeah, no, keep bumping. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Keep going that direction. Keep yeah. adding calories and getting stronger. Yeah, but give yourself more time, right? So you get your period back, and then it'll be like, okay, I want to see if I can maintain this for six months consistently, and then evaluate if you want to make any changes, because you literally just got it back. So you, 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 yeah. you changed everything too quickly. And, and a, a, a good goal, so this is kind of... and. You, if I had somebody I was training like you and we, let's say we, we did exactly what you did, which you did phenomenal, right? We got up to 2,100 periods back. You're feeling a lot better and stuff. And I, I as your coach, I'd be like, hey, let's keep going now. And you're like, well, Adam, I kind of want to lean out a little bit. I say, like, trust the process. Let me, now that I know that your body loves being around this 2,100 calories and strength training, let's mm -hmm. get you up to like 24, 2,500. And then I'll pull you back down to 21, 2,200. And now it's a cut. And now it's a cut. But it's still more calories than you ever ate before, and we already know that your your body starts to thank you when you're in that calorie. Like so, you at 2,100 calories, you were starting to see positive things happening with your with your hormones, with things going on with your libido, with your strength, muscle. All that stuff is happening for you. So that's a place I want I would like to keep you. But I also recognize that clients have goals, and maybe they want to lean out a little bit and lose body fat. I recognize that. So I would have I would have said, okay, let's keep building the metabolism let's get you to a higher calorie count so that when i cut you we're cutting at this where you're at currently right yeah. now ashina how long did you lose your period for again it's more than a year yeah yeah more you, than you, a year and then in, just by following your uh, i i literally just follow the uh advice you gave to that caller and in just two weeks it worked like magic for me well that's great that, means, then, that yeah. means your body's pretty healthy but it, it because you lost it for a year and it just came back. You got to kind of keep it consistent for a while before you decide to, to to add more stress by cutting or doing more workouts. You got to give yourself a little bit more time. I bet you're going to respond very quickly. Mm -hmm. If you bump your calories, mm -hmm. scale back the workouts, you'll probably respond really quickly again. And then, you know, like we're saying, kind of start, keep reverse dieting. Like give yourself some time to really build that muscle, build that metabolism, Stay on track. I know it's it, it's exciting because you're like, I feel good. Now I want to go in the other direction. Yeah. But stay there for a little exactly. while. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, because you're still kind of, you're, you're, you're iffy. Your body still is 100% sure that it wants to, you know, remain that way, right? So so give yourself mm -hmm. a little bit more time. Uh, the only struggle that I had was, that's the reason why I stopped eating more food is because I feel it's too, the 2100 is really, I feel like too much for me already. So I decided to just stop there. 
What do you 2,100 mean? calories for me is just too much for me to eat. Well, you mean like it was hard for you to eat it or you just think it's yeah oh. yeah it's just too much for me okay well hey look go back go back to just start increasing your calories maybe go up to 1900 scale back on your workout okay. see if that works but stay there stay there for a little while also keep in mind right. when you transition from a program like anabolic now into performance that is a new stimulus that is a new stress and so even without mm -hmm. messing with calories many times people's bodies will start to lean out yeah. and change just from mm -hmm switching a program that's one of the nice things yep. about doing something so dear like anabolic and performance are very different and so even without yeah. manipulating calories many times with it so i really that's why i said I, I if you were to cut or reduce calories i definitely wouldn't go on 500 maybe 100 you know like and so sal's okay. advice of you know go back up to like 1900 or whatever if if 2100 is a lot of food but i do think a good goal uh, is to try and increase those calories if you can hopefully the new stimulus also creates more of an appetite for you yeah Right. You're not okay. um you're not uh intermittent fasting or anything like that, are you? No, I'm not. Okay, good. good. Okay, yeah, good. don't do that. Okay, good. You're doing good. Stay yeah. the course. Yeah, Thank just, you. just just go back yeah. to what you were doing before and just stay try to stay consistent before change anything. Are are you in our private forum? All right. Facebook? No. Okay, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have no. Doug send you that so you have access so we can we can keep an eye on you. That way you can just message us, tag tag one of us or all of us, and uh we can keep an eye on you. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. You got it. Thanks yeah. for calling in. You have a good one. For sure. Bye. Bye-bye. The reason why, you know, so I actually had a client like this, right, where she, you know, I trained, she was an athlete, hardcore, lost her period uh, for a while. A lot of female athletes experienced this. And then she hired me and we got her period back. And it was like six months she was having a period. And then it went away again. She's like, what happened? I'm not overtraining, whatever. And I'm like, you, are you noticing this symptom, that symptom? And I forgot what it was. It was something like, yeah, my gums are a little swollen. I'm like, uh, you're pregnant. She's like, what? She went, literally, my studio was next to a uh, grocery store. She was, <laughs> She's like, oh, shit. She stopped the session, got a pregnancy test, came back, came back called her husband. We're having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. That's wow. cool. It was pretty awesome. That's pretty cool coming from someone who, what, just six months before that yeah. wasn't having their period. Yeah, but you're, you're, look, you're, you're, if you're a woman and you lose your period, it's because your body doesn't feel safe That's supporting it. another human. Yeah. It's a really, really strong sign that you're doing too much, eating too little, or there's a nutrient deficiency, or there's too much stress. Yeah. So it's like a really loud signal. Um, and it, and when you get it back, you got to give your body some time to reacclimate right. uh, because it'll it'll go back in the opposite direction real quick if you don't maintain it for at least a little while. Yeah, you got to be able to set that new standard and allow your body to really yeah get to that uh, cementing it. In, in place yeah, yeah totally. and people have to keep in mind like when we talk about because we say the number three to five hundred as a kind of a standard like reduced calories yeah but if your calories are so low that's right know. it's relative to the, the the size of the person the amount of calories they're already consuming uh that we recommend something like that so you take someone who's got only eating 2,000 2,100 calories and you cut them 500 calories 25 percent of big, their intake that's a huge yeah, you're eating 4,000 calories nothing yeah, yeah. exactly so that's a huge huge difference right there and and then also keeping in mind that again that this is a, another stress a new stimulus and so throwing both of those at the body that just started to get its period back is you know of, of course it started to revolt you know it probably felt like oh shit we're going back to old ways totally yeah, yeah. yeah totally Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our fitness guides. We have guides that can help you with exercise, fat loss, muscle building, mobility. I mean, so many different goals. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique.